Welcome to Passion of Award episode 219. The boys are back. Oh, just talent, just talent. You're just talented folks on this call right here. Everyone's super tired. I, I just, everyone's a resident sleeper. I can see it. I can see it in your eyes. Avril has been sleeping for 30 hours. Joss did four games yesterday. Avril is muted. Jake. <laughs> Jake That's he's like, oh, That's I need more than nine hours of sleep. <laughs> Uh, it's grind I'm, out there. I'm, I'm returning from a uh, from sleep deprivation over the last days. You know, it was a grind. Uh, don't, don't worry, guys. Jake only slept for nine hours. It's not enough. Don't worry. Oh, don't hey, worry, dude, you, your sleep deficit lasts more than one day. You don't just sleep one <laughs> good night and it fixes all. Yeah, your, your I've flown enough, past. man. I know how that fucking shit. You pop a melatonin, and it's all good, bro. That ain't, <laughs> just... ain't true, bro. That's, this is this is <laughs> gaslighting. Sleep deposit? What the fuck is a sleep deposit? Sleep. Go deficit. to the sleep bank. You go to yeah. sleep bank and deposit, Johnny. You go in deficit sleep if you don't debt. sleep enough. Yeah. The hidden it cost of you, insufficient rest. What the fuck? If you persistently fuck? sleep less than you need to, you accumulate what's known as a sleep debt. There's like a fatigue on your body yeah. that gets worse the more it gets. And if you, you don't, it doesn't go away because you sleep well one night or two nights. It takes like weeks and weeks of good sleep to get rid of. My my ass is a sleep mortgage. I'm just saying, you know, I'm I'm paying that off that's yearly. Uh, that's the that, that's I'm another way of saying that sleep that that's that's a... <laughs> You got you got you got to catch up. You got to catch up, bro. I got problems. Gonna have I'm to living sleep I've paycheck payments. to sleep paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. I'm getting my knees capped soon, guys. They're coming after me. I uh the paralysis demon is gonna break your legs <laughs> and get get paid. <laughs> Jake's junk right riptide is gonna get me at two a.m. That's all I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> I uh I, I looked at your 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 Solinum, uh on the on the channel uh Avril and you you oh, you've been on that up. grind twenty eight <laughs> streams in thirty days oh yeah, um, no stream. tonight tonight will be my oh sorry this episode is not live but by the time at the time of recording of this episode it will be my thirtieth stream in a row nonstop what well, I mean not nonstop crazy, but like thirty bro. days in a row without just look at the stream out. hours look at the stream hours on the on the sidebar there stream summary is that it's, a control. It's, 30 hours you you did no a bit of a nap there better. i saw you putting on vods and then leaving the stream on i i slept about five hours total in my 30 hours so i hey, we got time we, this is the background of the 30 hours people are like why is it 30 hours like it's a random number i just like i just threw a dart on the board and picked 30 as a random hour so how it came down was i did overseas korea and towards the end of korea um asia OWC's asia was planning to raid me i was like oh t if i get this tonight then I don't want to waste that opportunity. Then I'm not going to end up sleeping. I'm just going to end up staying through and just streaming through. And I was like debating whether I should take it tonight. And then I was like, screw it, you know, I'll take the opportunities I get. And so it ended up being a 30 hour stream because I was already meant to be streaming NA the next day. Um, I wasn't really meant to be doing EU, but I kind of just threw it in there anyway, just because it's, it's finals day. I want to watch everything, want to do everything. I just want to like do the whole thing before NA EU goes on a break. Um, and I was featured on the same day, like finals is also featured on the NAU broadcast. So it was like a, it was a huge feature day. We need to conduct so, an Overwatch intervention on you, bro. This is so gone I was like, too so far. I was like, so I was like, and so I was like, dude, I'm gonna end up doing NAU and Korea in the same day, but then the same evening is also Japan, and I also couldn't skip that. So this I ended up doing Korea into EMEA into NA into Japan, and the total span of all four of those regions, if you go. Back to back to back to back to back <laughs> is 30 hours. It's 30 hours, and that's why it was 30 hours streaming. I can feel Genuinely. like the oh, pressure God. behind my eyes building just hearing you describe this. It sounds terrible. It's it's too nice. much, man. It's too much, I'm dude. I'm sleep, bro. Tired. I have no job. Yeah, but you gotta sleep, <laughs> dog. Like... Yeah, no, I get it. I get it, Avril. I get uh, it. And I, you, I get have a, you have been popping off. You got like, what, 60 that subs before. that stream? So, uh,. You know, you, you got you got a grind, but like, dude, streaming is not healthy, man. Full time streaming. Oh, is, is... okay, okay. Oh, well, hold on. Right here, right here. I've made serious progress in this game. I'm gonna be real with you. I've made serious fucking progress in this climbing game. I was stuck in one area for about game six after days. Not sleeping? For about six. <laughs> <laughs> of all and, the games. And, and, okay, you okay. Choose and, this. And be be honest. You you climb in real life. I climb in the video game. Yeah, but I but I, I, I wouldn't. Progress. I don't climb in real life. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I made progress while being massively sleep deprived. Look, countdown to 30 hours, that means I was 29 and a half hours into my stream and I did this and I made, I, did, I got a PB in the climbing game, 29 and a half hours into my stream. Crazy, right? That is right? pretty sick. That, is, that proves that you don't need to sleep. 
proves it right there. It proves oh, and then I played you, Power Wash Simulator. I played Power Wash Simulator performance with Seth. Don't sleep. <laughs> oh, Power sounds, Wash Simulator. So this is me. Good. This, oh, is me. this sounds this like is, a game to play with 30 hours without sleeping. Yeah, this is Seth and I playing Power Wash together for the last half an hour of my stream. I just Seth fall really asleep. Like, how are you not asleep playing this game? It's Johnny, not very riveting. Johnny, Johnny, this is going to blow your mind. Not only did I play this game with Seth, I also then played the Overwatch lo-fi music from OWCS. Shout out to OBS Soldier. She put that one up. So I was relaxing music while chatting to Seth's deep, beautiful voice, cleaning houses. Bro, just do this in out. real life, bro. It's, it's way more fun. Dude, literally, you have a job. You <laughs> this is power okay. wash. <laughs> I guess you can't get subs if you do this in real life. Uh, anyway, we give you credit, everyone. We give you credit for uh, being nice. on the grind. Respect uh, the hustle. Yeah, and uh, that's why we have you on, so you can talk about all the regions. Uh, that isn't any of you. I am Ilios. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah! I forgot no, this about this. was good. I saw this in the studio. I was like, oh, was they legendary. have him on the map thing, huh? That's a good screenshot. I think Matt and the guys like, oh, Matt's like, apparently we're going to Avril. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just something like that. Like... That's so sick. Oh, Avril, the Greek god. There we go. Anyway. All right. Before we get into today's episode, guys, we got to talk about the one and only Manscaped, baby. This episode is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in the below the waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide. That's like 10% of the Overwatch player base who trust <laughs> Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code PLATCHAT for 20% off plus free shipping. After using Manscaped, I can finally say I've caught a spring fever. Great read here, Manscaped. I love it. Introducing the Seasons Champ, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It also features a dual LED spotlights to guide you through the darkest winter debris. Navigate with your confidence in your delicate areas. Hate making a mess? Not to worry. This bad boy is waterproof. Shave in the shower, in the bath, or in the ocean. In the <laughs> not, ocean not in the pools not in the hotel pools but maybe in the ocean i love this Damn. thing because it comes with a compact case and i can take it with me everywhere i go um i did not bring it to the studio i promise spring cleaning doesn't just <laughs> apply to the nether regions get the full grooming experience with massive signature beard head your pro kit plus handman electric face shaver whether you're looking to craft your signature look or clean up that neckline these are always the right tools for the job. I, I, I lagged. I lagged in real life there. <laughs> Doing the read there. <laughs> Get 20% off and free shipping with code PLATCHAT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code MANSCAPED. No, code PLATCHAT at MANSCAPED.com. What is happening? I've just lost it. Dude, I need okay, help. Okay, Johnny. We still love you. <laughs> I'm so, so, so tired. Anyway, MANSCAPED, we freaking love you guys. Because without you, MANSCAPED, there wouldn't be any PLATCHAT. That's right. I said it. So true. Manscaped, the actual goats. They're keeping us alive. We love you, Manscaped. Um, and we love everyone who uses code PLATCHAT at Manscaped. And continues to support. There we go. There and, we go. And, and who uses Manscaped in the sea. We love you too. Yeah. If you use it at sea. Yeah. That's okay. That's I, different. I'm not as lie. long as you use it with code PLATCHAT. Do you say yeah. at sea or in the sea? Those are different things. No, I, I, I think they were making a point that you could theoretically uh, use it in the ocean because it's waterproof. I see. In your neighbor's pool, too. Not your pool, though. That would be weird. Yeah, don't use it in your pool. Get the neighbors to clean out their one, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that'd be nasty. That'd be nasty. No. But, but the ocean, it kind not of works, I guess. Because like, it'd wash time. away. So, you know, you can't yeah. technically use it in the ocean. There's lots of worse things people are dumping in the ocean right now. I'm sure, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those are fine. Oh, yeah. Wait till, I, uh... wait till Jack finds out where sewage goes. That's going to blow his mind. Well, that's what I'm saying. We're dumping way worse <laughs> shit in the ocean, bro. I, I, I recently, I recently randomly, no context to this whatsoever, I, I had a, me, and a, me and a friend, we struck up a conversation about peeing in the shower. If you're peeing in the shower, you're, you're weird. I'm just telling you. I, I don't approve that at all. No Why? peeing in the shower, guys. Why? Don't, no, don't do that. That's, that's messed up. Dude, it's a place so to get clean. Three it's a we place have three to peers, get clean. One that's all I'm saying. I, I mean, do you just like clean your shower once in a while? Clean your bathroom? Like, like yeah, sure. I pour some vinegar. I pour some vinegar in that thing in this morning. It's not about pouring vinegar. You gotta clean. You gotta get a, get a sponge. Get a it, brush. Bro. It's yeah. about elbow grease. You heard about elbow grease, Johnny? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, the handyman in me has he heard of some. No, yeah. no, they, he, you heard about no, power washing in real one. life? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you always need the elbow oh, grease. Oh, a huge power washer in the roof. Hell yeah. Hell you, yeah. Always need, you always need elbow grease. Every All right. Day. Well, we, we know what Jake's does in the shower now. Anyway, moving on to OWCS. <laughs> I'll stand by it. I'll stand by it. I'm not scared. Okay, okay reinforce. Johnny, Johnny's just, just like fueled the next 10 fanfics about Jake. <laughs> Oh my Shut God. up. They've Shut already up. Been written, no, bro. no. You, it, people are people are weird. Stop, stop being weird, people. We don't need more weird people in the award scene. Can we, we have enough already. Oh, cool. weird. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually super Jake doesn't even care. I'm oh, oh my get Jesus weird. fucking Let's get weird. We're not okay. harming anybody else. I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Why are you right. Jake enabling this? This is It's long. 2024. Let's get weird. It's fine, yeah. Uh, okay, let's, let's get, get weird. weird. That's Jake's tagline, 2024. That's our slogan. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so look, guys, we have lots to talk about today because we got OWCS North America and EMA to talk about. But I figured I'd start here. We got an, a surprising lead to the podcast, a surprising lead story. And I do want to take a minute here. I do want to start off the podcast and chat about Japan. Is OWCS Japan? Is Japan as a country having a moment in the award space, we obviously have our expert on the podcast. It's Avril, who's been watching all the games. Because Lord knows, I have not watched Japan in a while, especially with the NA and EMEA main event going on. We don't have time to watch all those games. But t tons of Japanese streamers, they've been popping off on Twitch. Uh, Taiyu hosted his own tournament. There, there's like a few of these streamers who have like 40, 50k viewers when they're streaming Overwatch. It's like absurd. I don't know what's going on, but... OWCS Japan is popping off, and the entire region seems to be stoked about this whole open system. So, Avril, what, what's what's the read? What what's the what's the word of the street? First of all, when you said expert, I thought you were about to go to Jaws because, like, Jaws is the one of the biggest fans of a certain team slash player. Yeah, yeah. OWCS I've been Japan. Waking up Sorry, as well. Jaws. I've been waking up early watching it with Avril. I'm yeah, like, you don't wake up at Wait, six a.m. every day. <laughs> this guy just wakes up at six a.m. I'm waking up. 5 a.m. every like day, a -year -old making man. sure he's up, he's I log up, on. Sunrise. I go to Avril's Discord, see if he's in there. Boom, join the call. I'm in. Watching <laughs> Nam and Coochie Brothers as I'm half asleep. This shit goes crazy. Ain't no way. <laughs> Ain't nothing <laughs> like watching Overwatch that. when you're sleep deprived. I'll tell you that. Uh, I feel that. No, so Japan is yeah. Um, there's more regular. Okay, there's some some decent regularity in co-streaming <laughs> for. That's, That's got to be Look, new seven TV mode. That's gonna be new seven TV mode. Symmetric there. teleporter. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. there's 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 not only like reasonable viewership for Japan, just generally speaking, but Tayo typically um, host streams Japan, and he is getting comparable viewership sometimes to the main broadcast. Um, Tayo typically, I mean, Tayo's at the sort of stage where he's, I feel like, above eight K CCV pretty often, and he can get above like ten K maybe sometimes doing Japan. And then when he was doing his Tayo GP tournament, which was um, I don't know if it's something similar to the J three tournament, but it was it was a it was officially, um, I guess Activision Blizzard support. They had to have that in the stream title. That's how we know it's like Tayo GP supported by Activision Blizzard. Um, might be able to find a tweet of the actual uh, event itself so we can bring it up on stream. But um, it was some sort of I guess streamer tournament because there were a bunch of Japanese creators. But prior to even the Tyro GP, there were a bunch of Japanese creators who were already kind of playing Overwatch semi-regularly. And one of the dudes, the, the guy that was getting like 30 to 40k CCV, Kyushu, this guy is like, I don't know, pulling XQC level numbers, you know, from Japan. And he just randomly pops into the Overwatch category. Here it is, this is the event. Um, he randomly pulls into the Overwatch category and suddenly Overwatch is like top five on Twitch as soon as this guy streams in Overwatch category. Yeah, I had like 130k viewers or something on Twitch. On Twitch. The category yeah i saw yeah we 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 kind of peaked i tweeted about it as well we kind of peaked at about 130 something k viewers right below just chatting so it goes just chatting overwatch and then league of legends and everything else <laughs> and so yeah, we, we were the, the category is popping Makes up sense. and it's been like a while almost, guys <laughs> almost every single streamer like all the top streamers if you looked at saw by views something like 90 percent of the streamers during that period was they're all japanese streamers um, wow. but even even outside the Tyro GP, like um, they were kind of, I was seeing more Japanese streamers picking up Overwatch as like a regular game, including this like 30, 40 k guy Gato who was who had been regularly playing quick play and he was four stacking quick play one night. I was like, well, who are these guys? What are they doing? And it was like their third or fourth night in a row, quick stack, uh, quick play, four stacking, 
and dude is like he's new to the game he has no skins default crosshair equipped on cassidy literally default crosshair just clicking heads in quick play and having the time was live. i was like this is it we've made it guys we've caught we've like, we've entered japan we're in the japanosphere um and on top of that like yeah owc's japan viewership has been stable it's been competitive with even korea viewership honestly so could, could, something something great is happening in japan for overwatch we're having renaissance the free to play definitely helps. I think it's it's right. exciting to see these like like what would have been lesser known regions in the Overwatch League, you know, get their own domestic scenes going. Yeah. And then yeah, right now, sure, the regions that were more dominant during Overwatch League are still gonna be dominant. But I think it's exciting because long term future, you know, in a few years, it's a lot easier to close the gap as these like lower level regions. It's a lot easier to close the gap than it is to stay further ahead. So I think naturally you will see potentially a, a really internationally competitive team out of Japan given enough time. And I think with the domestic scene that that actually can happen, right? Rather than when, if, if you just only need to make it to Overwatch League, like Taiwa was the only player ever to do it because it's really hard to bridge the gap um, without like living in NA and playing NA rank. There's not enough competition but with the domestic scene. Maybe that's, maybe that's no longer the case. I think it's exciting because, you know, this can pay dividends for years uh, if the scene continues to grow in Japan. They're actually getting support, bro. Like, that's the thing. They're, all they needed was, like, a little bit of support. Like, a, just a sprinkling of support. It reminds me of the um, South America uh, contenders back in the day. And that was, uh, like, a region on its own. Like, it wasn't doing, like, NA numbers, but they actually got support. And we saw way more, like, South American players, like, going through even some, some of them even going into, like, North American contenders. And then as soon as contenders got, like, wiped out, it was like, well, that region is kind of... That's it. There, there, there was nothing more. And then Valorant swooped in and look at what's happened to Valorant. Yeah. I mean, they were, I think that region was pretty big into CS anyway. So that definitely kind of helped. But still, like, even supporting a region somewhat, like a, a small sprinkling of help, just goes so fucking far. And I think Japan is definitely like the up and coming region in Overwatch right now, um, for sure. Not just on like the streaming front, but like players too. It's going to take a little while because Barrel has been like the only team that's been competitive forever and they were the world cup team like they were going to be the best team in owcs japan like without a doubt but it's going to take maybe one year two years kind of thing and then we're really going to start to see teams and individual players maybe even swap regions go to other regions too like it's it's super exciting i think and um just to speak on the the skill levels of like what, what uh, both you guys brought up the one really huge benefit japan's got going for it as far as skilling up quickly is proximity to Korea for scrims. Yeah. Um, you can really see the influence when when you watch Varel, who, as Jack said, is like that's Team Japan, right? That's the best team in Japan by none. They've only dropped one map so far. Whole group stage, one map drop. They just three would across the board. Uh, so, well, three would across the board except for a single three one. Anyway, point is, when you watch them, you can very clearly see three and Overwatch influence. Whatever the meta was in Korea, Varel was playing it. Other teams in Japan might have been on comfort picks because they're kind of, you know, more up-and-coming burgeoning teams who are still trying to figure it out. Varel, they're a team that consistently look like they know what they're doing meta-wise. They're playing Korean-based comps, Korean-based styles. You can see the Korean um, scrim influence in their gameplay, and they have legitimate threats on their team as far as, like, mechanical players go. So, um, yeah, over time, I think we're just going to get more of that. You're going to get with the pro screen proximity, you're going to get more teams able to learn from stronger regions. And that's going to like basically throw you into, you know, the, the hyperbolic time chamber, DBZ style, and just level you up real quick. We, we never really got a reason, right, as to why there's no Oceanic or South uh, American region this year, right? Because it is, uh, it is a bit of a bit of a shame because a, both of those I feel like are hot spots where like people would love to well compete. In I, I don't know if it's been officially confirmed. But I think the biggest thing is just there's just not the player base in those. Yeah. That's wrong. Um, well, that's I'll say it this way. It depends what you mean when you say player base. Do you mean like I mean people how, who how play big, the game? Like how casuals. big does it need to be? What is the threshold though? Like how big does it I, need to be? I don't know, be? man. I don't know what the numbers are. They don't say they don't because the thing stuff. is, I'll I'll say this. Like I don't I I don't want to speak to South America because I don't know enough about that region. Um even though there are plenty of fans of players that I think would like for one day if there'd be more support again. But I think there's other issues there, like what is their server support? Um, you know, I keep hearing things about whether they have or have not got servers there and all that kind of stuff. So it's a weird situation. Australia has servers. 
And um, Australia's had a pretty dedicated player base as well. Because I even- remember when I was at the World Cup event in 2017, I mean, the Australian community like hard rallied behind the Australian World Cup team um at that event and that that was always so crazy to me that like those those australian fans were so welcoming and and supportive and obviously passionate so we had we had like we we throughout the entire lifetime of contenders from obviously without we're not talking about contender season zero because that was just a precursor to al but contender season one all the way through to the last contender season in you know late 2023 it was fully supported we had our own region um, it was sponsored by McDonald's the entire way through. I kid you not. It was the longest running sponsor in Overwatch esports history. That I can say with 100% certainty. You know, uh, when Al had no sponsors, Contenders Australia still had a sponsor. Just saying. Um, and, and you did funded... the, the, the ESL events, right? Were ESL yeah. events in Australia? And ESL and ESL were were running in partnership with Blizzard Australia, um, Contenders Australia the entire way through. And and this is the other insane thing to think about as well. Um, when NA and EU were still not like lands are hard guys especially in big countries and australia and new zealand that's like technically two countries and you do have to do flights so it's not like simple now states in australia as well so to do a land australia is slight it's going to be less challenging than doing the land in, in say america but there's still massive challenges logistically they still did a land for every single contenders australia final between 2018 yeah over 2018 and 2019 so basically pre-covid there was a land in every single Contender Australia final and even stadium level lands. We had two MEOs, the Melbourne Esports Open, uh, in like Rod Laver Ring, like this massive, the, where they play the tennis open. Um, you guys know what that hold is. Hold on. I mean, I, and I then get that I am as well. A big, the third I am. I get that there's a big, there was like a lot of these big events, but like, I don't think Blizzard is like stupid or crazy. Like, I think if there was a big player base, like, they just have a certain number of resources to commit to the esports, and if they're not running a, a, a competitive circuit in a region, it's because they don't think it's going to get the player well, base or the numbers that they need it to get, or, the, a few, or they don't think few, it's the best use of the resources. There's a few... I'm, I'm, I'm holding back on information here, too. Let's be clear as well. Like, I'm, I don't, like... I don't want to comment on speculation on, like... There, there's a few things I'm, like, potentially semi-juiced on, and I, it sounds like bait, but I mean, no, it's understandable. I could, I could, I could, topic, I, could you know? I could tell you, I could like, I could, it's, it's probably like a, a bit of a potentially weird one to talk about publicly. Cause I don't know what is apps actually confirmed and what is not. Um, and conversations with people behind the scenes, it's like, you know, it might be a little risky. So based on what I know through any amount of research that I've done to try and find out what the hell happened, um, yeah, it it doesn't sound like to me that that was the reason, Jake. In terms of oh, there's just not enough player population here, um, because I don't think it would have been that hard to just throw Australia into OWCS Pacific and say, hey, Australian players can play in this region without being considered an import, and you can have a full Australian team. It's not a reason, even if you only get you yeah, get I agree more with than that. Why not? You get more I, than one or two. That that you I get, agree is a different question. Why not just make it a non-import for Pacific? Yeah, and, that, that, that and that's and that's and that's a very very center. That's under, by the way, if you can see on the fucking screen, um, under in the young days before his mullet, and Look at um, him. oh my the God. young Bro man, 15, young Bro buck, fifteen years old, playing on stage for the first time, and this, and you know what, during the times that we've had Australia and Pacific Japan and the rest of Asia mixed, outside of Korea, generally speaking. Well, outside of Korea and China, generally speaking, Australia was the next best team in the region because Australia also used the screen proximity to Korea to level up really fast. That's how you get guys like Kafka come out looking really strong because he grinded high ping in both Korea and NA for the longest time. That's how we eventually got some Al players coming on through, like, you know, the Adams of the world who unfortunately never got to really play and Troll getting his shot at some stage. And, um, you know, who knows, maybe maybe at some other point. It seems like Australian tanks and Australian casters are the, are the real exports to the region. Um, yeah, actually. But Australia was beating beating the other teams in Pacific and Japan and all that with quite regularly. Like Australia was actually the, the next strongest region after Korea and China in over, overall in Asia. So... Yeah, so like, that... we, but we just I have no idea why they don't let them play in Pacific without being imports. Like, I don't, I don't get it, but... So I feel like, what can we say other than we don't know? Um, I mean, I I like fifty percent know, but like I have I've I have to do a bit of teasing here, and like I don't know if I can 
I don't want to get into that publicly is a problem. Just because yeah. um I don't know, some trust things there. I don't know. Sure, I don't want sure. to leak I don't want to leak shit and get anyone in trouble. I don't like actually know. I don't have a definitive answer. But I feel like I'm halfway there. I feel like in the investigation, I'm like fifty percent of the way there, if you know what I mean. So so I have a good idea, but it's not definitive. It's not really conclusive, unfortunately. So I don't like have the full picture of like actually why. It, I I don't know. I don't want to like. I think OWCS and their, their team have done well. I think the esports team have generally done well, but just the, the major question mark is what happened to Australia. Yeah, I think I think Japan. Going back to Japan, I think that Japan has been a great kind of like sign now. Now we have proof that you know supporting a region like Japan, for example, it actually you know helps the region grow, grow popularity and, and hype. Um, around the competitive scene and i hope that that gives inspiration to you know dedicate resources to oceanic but also south america um the french region is obviously in in incredible i say region it it's a country region, <laughs> <frozen> country. <laughs> france france <laughs> Fra the, the country is <laughs> really up up about awards and they have historically been you know and you know not only because you know when they didn't get uh, a dedicated french broadcast they you know they were upset but like even before that you know they held events um you know they held their own tournaments um and and, and really tried to organize and, and show their passion they're like a huge part of um the european hype and that's happening in other games too like even league of legends you know is massive in, in, in france too so and so um if you can encourage that kind of stuff uh that that's obviously hugely beneficial and get make overwatch a global game and not just where it was before it was like oh we have north america and korea and now it's like europe north america and korea and you know let's open it up let's open it up let's yeah. let's have everyone enjoy their own competitive region which then leads into global competition right which is the end goal so a huge great sign um anyone got anything else before we move on here yeah i think namakuchi brothers are great um yeah they're a good team Co context they're a fun team context is fun. a one hog there's one trick hog team in japan yeah. and they have one trick yeah. hog they play doom i saw them playing two. doom yeah 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 i've uh, i've played with two players uh, of namakuchi brothers in, in what, NA what, what, what rank are they in na i'm curious uh, are they like high I masters i'd have to check my profile or like low gm profile i mean i'm you, masters two right now um, so you queued to them in na right is that how it works yeah yeah like yeah. they queued in a cc2 i i matched cc2 and jisoo and i added them both yeah and they're both like they they play a lot like they play when i play which is like sometimes early in the morning or like um you know like 10 11 o'clock or something i was playing today on stream and i played against jisoo and stuff uh, yeah i think they're just like perma spamming na because that's where the best competition is right now if they yeah, can't get on yeah. the korean servers because you need um ssn or like their version of ssn uh, you need a korean identity card so yeah they just play on na servers which makes sense they play on a lot of ping but jesus christ cc2's hands are fucking disgusting though or even on ping that guy is hitting heads that guy's hitting logs from across the map is ridiculous but yeah i'm curious at the I go, overall what if you played soldier and imagine the possibilities i know yeah he's, he's, actually just be the go to he he's not he's, he's not, not there on he the has texture integrity yet. unlike he's me waiting. i watch merit and then i just play soldier all day for two days yeah. straight it was great how was it there, there were, were you in everything like him it's good i won a lot of games yeah i'm just like him <laughs> I'm just like Mary, guys. He looks the yeah, same. So true. Um, last thing about Japan, I'll, I'll say is that they're about to. So the the qualif we're into the what? Um, I guess the like the main event stage now, as you could call it. Asia's on a different format to NAEU, so yeah. the LCQ NAEU is watches right now might. For Japan. Uh, yeah, it's an LCQ slash playoffs. So no, they go they into the same. Oh, no, 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 they're oh, good. No, they're in the lower bracket. We're no, good. they're good. They're in the lower bracket. We're, we're so oh, so there's God. nine teams. I'll explain it very fast. Right? There's nine teams. The okay. bottom team is eliminated. So Niam Gaming's gone. Top four teams go into this thing called a seeding qualifier, which is what you see above. That's where seeding decide matches. We have Varel, Insomnia, Six Blue, Rivadia, um, and Varel still stomping their way through that. And then the next four teams, I think through five through eight, go in this thing called Last Chance Qualifier. And then the top two teams from the LCQ play those one to four teams in a playoffs. And then I think it's the top Solomon, you have to scroll up so we can confirm the exact number. I think it's a two or three that go from Japan. Just the prize pool area will show you the our top two teams go to the main event. Yeah. So the top two play teams from that, that playoffs then go to the main event, which is the Asia land. The Asia land yeah. is what qualifies the Asian teams into Dallas. And then top two, I believe come from that. Right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so there's, there's, so there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's many pathways there's many luck, pathways Meryl, you guys got this 
to Only get Only whack and Falcons to beat. Yeah, <laughs> to go to right. land. You can do it. <laughs> Fighting. Let's go. I have bad that. news for you, Jack. I saw your 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 boys are going up against a team that just smoked them 3-0. So I know, it's bro. Little, it's so sad. It's looking like they, they're about to make a huge comeback. They can. And, they can. And play the Jisoo same strat like, again. I was messaging Jisoo when I... I friended him and he was like i've got my we've got our last game like today and i was like okay good our luck, last good luck. Game, and bro is last, that your last game if you win not, not last game but like our lcq game right uh we got one yeah. more game kind of thing and because it's against a rise and i'm like yeah you win that and yeah now looking at the bracket that's rough that's, that's rough. rough i'm cheering bro. for him bro i said i'd cheer for them i'm 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 down high boost gaming believe. i have, co good, I have copy for you i have copy for you jack okay a rise okay. rise just lost to pandia and in that game specifically um there was a report on Twitter from one of the teammates that said their tank, Dan One or Danny, didn't show up to scrims and has been MIA. So they literally had to play Pandia Wait, with their support zero fee Wait, on main tank. And they had to use their sub support. And so their, their team is in, in a weird place right now where they don't have a tank. Their main support is playing tank. So, and they play Namakuji tonight, I think. So it, it is maybe kind of <laughs> winnable because because the Rise project is the team is in shambles right now. Roster in shambles. So. Namakuji is gonna ride ride the coattails all the way. Hell but can yeah. they? They have to be Pandia, don't they? Well, that's yes. it. We cross. Sorry, we cross that bridge and we the get grand to it. Oh no, bad. they're both qualified from grand finals. So by the looks oh. of it, right on the end okay. bit here. What's yeah. this end bit? Yeah, maybe top two. Top two. Top two, yeah. Top okay. Two. There we go. It's a single Elim bracket with Wack it's and Falcons in it. Got... Okay, yeah, that's a little rough. <laughs> I will say that is a little rough. Uh, Mamakuchi Brothers Good might not luck. be winning that one. It's going to be great. But they win in this upper bracket final, bro, I believe. But I, I don't know who's in charge of the bracket. Put Wack and Falcons against each other in the first round. Yeah, 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 first yeah. round. <laughs> Can you that imagine? That would be so <laughs> fucked up, actually. <laughs> If they had to you know, kick each other out, that would be hilarious. Well, uh, I'm happy to tell you guys that uh, last year there was a DreamHack Japan. So maybe we, we, can, we can pray to the gaming gods uh, at DreamHack. That maybe they'll hold sick. DreamHack Japan in 2025. And so maybe we'll insane, have an, an Overwatch bro. event there and we can go to Japan, everybody. Because that, that, that'd be good. Then me and my wife could go on a honeymoon there with maybe tickets for free if I get to work even then. But, you know, DreamHack Japan, M make it happen. Let's, let's, let's go. It. I'll, I'll, I'll talk hard. to my people. Let's get it spun up. Let's get, let's get it spun up. <laughs> let's do some theory crafting. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do some we've brainstorming. Seen, we've seen what they've done with Valorant in Japan. So, it's, you know, they've the, we had a Masters there. It was huge. Exactly. So, I mean, That's it's possible really and it could go. It could Not pop my off. total, my own self-interest in mind, but yes. I want sure. to go to Japan. It seems fun. Yeah, I want to. I don't think I mean, I think there's, there's a legitimate point with the community popping off this hard. Like, that's got to be on their radar. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And it being a dream hack as well is like, that's the perfect puzzle piece. Like, that's well, it. there's that's not one we scheduled. I'm hoping there is one scheduled for next year. So far, dream hack, uh, we only know they're going to, uh, they, got, they got one in Australia actually next month. And then there's Dallas, dream hack summer, Atlanta, and Stockholm. So we don't know yeah, what they're doing. Bring the major to, to Australia. Bring the major here. <laughs> we know WC is right, uh, right I mean, down my alley. Next, there is an event. See, dream hack Melbourne activities. Yep. There's one, there's one each year, and they do esports, e well. ESL Challenger, and LCO. That sounds really exciting. League of Legends live on stage. Ground Zero Gaming against Anti C. I'm just reading stuff that's not on screen right now. Good luck, everybody. Um, yeah, there's some Counter Strike being played in Melbourne. You can, you can head over there. Yep. There we go. Have fun with that. Um, all right, let's jump into uh, the action that took place in the OWCS Europe um, before we get to NA. Uh, obviously, Twisted Minds ended up beating Enz to become the stage one champion after taking a loss to Enz in the uh, upper bracket finals. Uh, they did. They performed the comeback, beating Ex Oblivion in the lower bracket, and then beating Enz 4-1 in the finals. So very impressive overall. Obviously, Twisted Minds continuing their dominance here in in europe now and if you i mean if you look at their liquipedia page it's it's ridiculous it's just just first place just first place everywhere it's uh they, they've been they've been popping off so very good they are very good very good indeed uh took down nc sports so uh yeah let, let, yeah let's just kind of start there um what did you think of the finals what do you think about the main event overall it seemed like it was a pretty competitive region uh it was nice to see exo uh taking down peps and then also space station gaming so there was some drama after all um but twisted minds at the end of the day took down nc sports and a pretty 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 one-sided they had the compositions figured out with the mauga and the uh, symmetric composition and then swapping over to the to the ram 
um, as well. In the finals, making some late minute adjustments. Uh, Jake, what what do you think of the finals? How do you enjoy it? Uh, I mean, overall, I was just I was impressed. You know, I was impressed with like a lot of these, a lot of the up and coming people from from different regions. Up and coming is maybe it's not the right word anymore, right? Because there are people players who are on that level. I think just with how much the game has shifted in the last few months and just how much more these regions have now opened up. I think we've seen that some of these some of these teams that you wouldn't have predicted would do well actually went incredibly far. Obviously, in the end, it's been sort of the most experienced veteran talent that have risen to the top in general, um, but not in, not in every case. And I think it makes it really exciting to watch as a fan. And you, you have this uncertainty of like, the question remains, who's going to win in an international event? You know, there's more shakeups to come and more qualifiers to come. So I, I'm just a big fan of the format. Um, I feel like Twisted Minds played incredibly well. I think, I mean, this this was a this was just a team outplay what, that won them this series, right? Individual skill-wise, you feel like, man, like how could they possibly compete with players like Kevster and Kai? But they did on an individual level. And on a team level, they, they were better. I mean, they won both sides of this um, Sim, Malga versus Ram matchup. Like they won both sides of the matchup on Twisted Minds. Um, you know, on Shambhali, they played the opposite side of the matchup and still won it. And so I think that really speaks to, to their skills as a team. It's not just about comp gap. I mean, we can criticize ends maybe for, for strategy or coaching decisions, playing a comp they really hadn't practiced. Uh, but I think in the end, you got to praise Twisted Minds for being the team that, like, put them in that position, that, like, punished their weaknesses and maybe some overconfidence from Ents um, as far as, like, their read of the meta, thinking they can win with um, without playing all these comps, not being ready to play them. Yeah, um, I listened I, I listened to um, to uh, the interview with Gunba by yeah. Yiska this morning, actually. Uh, it was a really good interview. I, I, go, I recommend people go watch it. Gunba, obviously, incredibly insightful and analytical as always um but you know i i think so one thing we haven't talked about with wcs is that like it obviously kind of sucks <laughs> that the patch hit on tuesday there was like a hot fix that changed it from the yeah. maga meta to all these different things and so like later on in the segment we will talk about like space station gaming and their compositions and like it as much as i want to be like oh my god this was sick and you know late minute adjustments like it it is it is not great for competitive integrity that we have that hotfix patch. And just personally speaking, I know some people will be like, oh, you know, they were able to adapt. You know, if you were able to adapt in a, in a short amount of time, that's a special kind of skills. I'm just not sure personally that's the kind of skill that I'm after. I think it increases, uh, um, not variety, what I'm looking for. Um, variance it increases variance in like results and that doesn't necessarily mean you're the better team sometimes so i don't want to take it away from anyone but i do feel like there's a bit of an asterisk because i do feel like teams especially like gunba said in the interview as well um that it's hard to have a deep map pool when they you hot fix like a couple days before and then suddenly like Oh, maybe you're like th second or third best hybrid map. You you don't ha you don't have time to like theory craft that map as much and figure out that stuff, right? And so it does increase variance a little bit. So you know, at the end of the day, I I, I think he said in the interview that playing the um, they didn't execute well enough with the Malga. They didn't really feel like there was a huge like compositional uh wrong decision or whatever obviously twisted minds out play them both ways like you said jake but yeah. they they did kind of feel like they they were maybe under, underprepared in that regard and i i think a lot pretty much every team in the tournament was probably quote unquote underprepared going into it yeah i mean certainly no one's like fully prepared but i don't know i guess i disagree with i guess i guess to, i i kind of am down for the variance in a way like i i'm down for the or or this the variance is wrong for me not the right word. I, what i think of it is like i'm down for the skill to be emphasized of like, can you adapt on match day and can you bring out like a new look? You know, even Twisted Mindset in their winners interview, they just felt like, you know, let's go to the Ram, let's go to what we're confident on and not worry about, um, you know, like what we practiced or what the meta is. Like, let's play like what we're, what we are really good at. And I think that's honestly really fun to watch. I think full mirror matches, as long as they're like high skill mirrors, it's like, okay. But I would rather watch a compositional mismatch. And I think that's much more likely to happen when the meta the people don't have time to test every variance every response you know how how to react to every different hero swap that could possibly come out that it's not all pre-planned that puts more emphasis on players i mean i see as a coach i think as a coach you you like almost by definition don't want this because as a coach it's like it basically means you're less important um because you you know you, yeah you can like give people feedback over the matches but for a coach to really be effective they need like 
many, many iterations of scrims and watch the matchup over and over again. Okay, we'll try this hero. Okay, we'll try that hero. Okay, we'll play this way or that way. Like, in the end, if you're only playing five maps and you have very low sample size, the coach doesn't really get to have that impact. But that means it's up to the players. It's up to the players to have the read of, like, in each map, what are they doing that's working? Do we need to play a different comp? Like, if you're relying on, like, just wait till the coach tells us what to play, you're going to be heavily handicapped in that spot. But I want you to be heavily handicapped if you're just, like, I need the coach to tell you what to play. And you can't think on the fly and think, you know what, maybe we just need this hero here. You know, maybe we should, maybe you can play this way to enable me, et cetera. Like, I want to see those, like, that for me is, is more exciting, I guess. The, the player skill it, to make those reads their own without needing a coach is more exciting. Depends on, like, what we're trying to value here. I think, I think we can all agree that, like, on, on some level of variance, we wouldn't want that. We wouldn't want a patch to drop mid tournament. We, okay, let me get more. No, I don't you think it's a want, good thing, to be fair. I wouldn't, wouldn't say, like, want let's do this patch every drop time. mid series. Your, your three maps out of a BO7 patch drops. We wouldn't want that. Um, no. So, do we do we value? And, you know, the reason I bring up that extreme example is just to, just to point out that, you know, there's a level of variance that exists would be acceptable. And, and there's plenty of variance that absolutely would not be acceptable. And variance is like, I think there's a little bit of desirability, but I don't, I don't know if I fully agree that that's something I would absolutely desire um, as a regular thing. I think, you know, it, it's That's good to have it, teams. It's not a direct net positive. I just think it's so much more important that we like, get, like, a it good, does test a different meta. It, it tests than... a different skill, which I appreciate. But yeah. I also think, I think, I think it does, like, because you could go towards the opposite arguments, like, well, is it a little bit Mickey Mouse? Because then teams don't get the maximum preparation. They don't get to refine a composition. They don't get to refine gameplay. You're never going to get the high highs. As much as I'm one of the biggest GOATS haters in the world, you're never going to get the high highs of peak Vancouver versus peak shock on that composition where you've truly mastered something so, so much you refined it to the maximum possible, right? You don't get to see what could be considered, quote unquote, peak Overwatch if um, if there's too much variance. So there's, you know, there's, there's that, there's those kind of sides to the argument. Uh, I want to bring up one thing that I felt was, I didn't list to, for context, I didn't get a chance to listen to the entire interview because like um, it kind of dropped in the middle of the night for me uh, while I was streaming. But one of the things I got as a takeaway, and this was in the clip that Yeska posted, is that uh, Gumba mentioned that Twisted Minds in the final, as, especially compared to the other games, but especially in the finals, for some reason, Twisted Minds banned their own favorable maps. So yeah. there's a there's an expectation in the in the drafting phase of the pick ban of the maps, and the teams who scream each other a lot, all the top teams scream each other a lot, they know what the favorite maps are. They know, okay, we play against Twisted Minds. These are the maps they got on. These are the maps they're going to pick. And TM did the exact opposite, and they banned their own good maps for some reason. Yeah, they got, um, they got fucking... That's called getting outplayed. That's... And then... Yeah, so... That is, that I, is uh, called not, getting outplayed. That is called getting yeah, outplayed. Yeah, I'm, I'm just... I'm, I'm just telling the, the... You know, I'm just giving some context here in terms no, of like I mean, how, I mean, how the game went down. And so there was that factor that kind of like threw a wrench in the works... And then the whole like Ram Malga thing is very interesting because I was also in Cloudy stream last night to get his opinion on it. Um, and even he, even he's saying like, you know, the, they, the entire team, Cloudy, I don't know about the rest of the players, but like Gumba obviously basically saying the Ram comp should lose to the Malga comp on paper in terms of, you know, matchup statistics. And that's even proven by TM running the Malga themselves versus Ram to beat the Ram. And so the real difference to me is I think what you brought up in your initial statement, Jake was really interesting about maybe the lack of preparation or um, the lack of ability to execute on the comp. But you basically have a team that has got way less game time on Sim Malga than TM. Who, when you look at the history of that team, if you take away the Malga and just put them put in a Sigma or anything else, they're still a really strong Sig team, a, a, a Symmetra team. Yubi's got an insanely good Symmetra, super practice on that hero. I believe he's also the shot caller for the team, so there's a leadership aspect with the Sim gameplay that they can all put together. And when you watch them play Sim Malga versus Exo, and how clean those executions are, you can tell the level of practice from um, Ants on that same comp probably wasn't there. So TM essentially forced, you could argue basically forced um, Ants onto the counter comp, or maybe baited them onto the counter comp, but Ants couldn't execute that counter comp as well as TM could. And so you, then when you say like, Ants lost both sides of the matchup. Um, yeah, unfortunately, like, they couldn't really execute the way with Kevstar and Symmetra, and that ended up being the whole community discussion. Like, should Kevstar have been on Symmetra? Because in the Ram Mirror, you put him back on the Tracer, he does look better. Uh, Gumba also argued that, like, I think the community believes the gap between Kevstar and Yubi is, like, insane, when Yubi's actually probably underrated there and, and incredibly good at Tracer. I think Yubi was really good. Matchup. Yubi yeah. had six so, yeah. I was on Servasa, especially. I don't I think, think Yubi's a bad the community Tracer. Probably, the community probably needs to, like, 
understand that UB is a lot closer to Kevster than people think Kevster is just untouchable. Is the other point? I mean, I agree with that, but I just don't. I don't. I don't understand what the point of that they're making is. Like, number one, complaining about Sim, they played Sim. Isn't that what they fucking prepped the whole goddamn before the patch came? That's what they were all playing, no? Or like maybe it was like a Reaper version or something. But surely. They played the combo bunch, right? Yeah, like, that was, the, that team, was the meta. Team, team, team's entire history is a team they played that. Whereas yeah. Ents is a new team, is, is what I'm getting at. And right, they, right. They, so they I, guess, I guess my point is like, yeah, so you, you lost, you got outplayed. Ents baited you, or right. TM, TM baited you to think they were going to play these certain maps, and then they used their flexibility across the map pool to abuse you because they banned the maps that you probably prepped. They knew that, right? So they're like, oh, we, we can play any map, actually, because so, we're the better team. So we'll ban the maps you thought we would play because we don't need the good maps for us that we're so experienced on. We don't need that because we can play every map. They're the they're a better team. Like for yeah, me, t t Twisted Minds were the better team. Correct. They were the better team. Hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. With that. So so for me, I it's like I mean, I don't even criticize Gumbo's coaching decision in a way. Like I don't say, oh, they should have played another comp or whatever. Maybe at, maybe like, like even the earlier maps. There's a lot of close maps playing the the Sim Malga into the Ram. Whereas like maybe they did just slip up in these crucial moments and like they can definitely win with that comp, right? So I don't. I'm this not is, even criticizing this is the them. Response. Like, you're supposed to play it, Tracer. It's my, not even, my, I just don't understand what the point that is being made here, I guess, about the patch. The like, I think is, the most important thing is just don't have a one-trick, boring-ass meta-the-watch comp in the pro match. I just think, I think that the, is more I think important the than point anything is, else. I think the point is... Sorry, Jack. I know we haven't leaked. Okay. The point is, it's me It's me and Jake yapping oh. at the moment. Um, I think the point is, it's like there's a lot of community negativity and sentiment towards like, oh, Gumba's just bad, or like, and, and they messed up. They, well, I guess they did mess up, but I think people expected Ents to be the favorites because they did win the upper bracket game. But people should have expected Twisted Minds to be favorites because when you look at the history, and you guys talked about this on the desk on the broadcast, actually, Twisted Minds had basically been the reigning champions in Europe the entire way through. They were the team to beat. They went to Korea. Ents, no, I'm Ents is, they, and they went to Korea to boot camp as well. It's true. So Ents is the team that is the, uh, even with all the Overwatch League players and Kevster, you know, MVP candidate many years running, Deservedly, even with Kevster, Ents is technically speaking still the underdog team in that matchup. Because TM, Twisted Minds, are the more proven team in that region in World Cup when it's the majority, that core of the same team won the World Cup against China, against everybody else. Um, people in the community underestimated the hell out of Twisted Minds, and that was probably exacerbated by the fact that TM then lost to Ents in the upper bracket. And then people probably expected Ents to win in the finals and were very disappointed they didn't. So, um, they just thought Twisted Minds were maybe not a good team compared to Ants when really I think Twisted winning the final should have been the expectation. Yeah, yeah, I'm with that. I think Twisted Minds played super well. I don't think Ants like hard through. I think they just weren't the better team on match day and Twisted Minds better prep, better picks, better play. Did you have any thoughts, Jaws, on the uh, on the finals matchup itself before we talk about some of the other teams? Yeah, I mean, I I think and this is something Kai uh, talked about in the green room not in the green room. I talked about it with somebody. I can't fucking remember, bro. It's been around <laughs> four fucking days, dog. Like, I don't know. Um, but I think it was on cast, actually, maybe with Rose, and saying, like, it's strange that we're seeing so much Kev's to Sim when, like, the carry potential for Sim is, like, way lower than the Tracer. Um, and it felt like, especially against Twisted Minds, you need to match UB because UB was just... UB was kind of a psychopath, I think, uh, during through the whole series. And, like, he flipped gears completely with the whole, like, TP thing with the Sim. And then he was switching to Tracer and he was looking really good. And, it, and then Ents were just playing this Kevster on Sim. I was like, man, this kind of... This shit kind of sucks. Like, I feel I feel like it definitely does work with the Sim. Twisted Minds definitely played that comp better with the Sim. TPing around, uh, TPing around the map, especially on places like Blizzard World. But not having Kevster on, on Tracer really surprised me. Because that's one of the most dominant heroes you can play and like it has the most carry potential like what did everybody else think of that because for me that was has an answer to that. that series i mean if you're <laughs> gonna play the comp you need the sim so it's just like yeah maybe you give up quicker because you think you're supposed to win with the sim malga comp but then you're not you give up faster but then again like i mean you look at the if maps they lost the comp, I a totally number of them are it. very close like you can't if you're gonna play tracer you probably just need a mirror i don't think the malga is actually that good anymore once you're not yeah. playing sim so in the way, in a way, you're like Gumba's thinking we have a comp advantage here, so it's worth yep. playing Sim because we have a comp advantage. We don't need just Kevster to carry. I mean, in the end, I think it's a, it would be a bad way to look at the game. Like, well, if Kevster's not carrying, we can't win. Then your team kind of sucks. Definitely. Actually, your, te your team win can't win if that's the story. If your yeah, narrative yeah, yeah. is Kevster must carry or you lose, you 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 can't be the champion. Straight up. 
Um, but Gumbo actually kind of half answered that as well, like in terms of the tracer question, because that's like the hot community question. Well, it's like, and his, I, I, I have to slightly repeat myself here. His answer is basically like, guys, the answer isn't, oh, you put Kev some tracer equals win, because UB is good enough at tracer that there is not yeah. enough of a gap created there by simply swapping Kev to tracer that you instantly just win. And the community I'm, will probably say, well, look at the Ram, Ram, Mirror. You know, they did take that one. I will and... say, Kevster was doing different things on that, Shibali. That's true. That was, it's there true. was okay. occurrences yeah. that cannot be explained and by was, science. Do you mean Servasa? Do you mean Servasa? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Shibali was the... I was really... I mean, oh, dude, he, that, when yeah. they lost... Me he and was Jake going, freaked out when he was like, like 1 HP. sicko mode. Yeah, he was he 1 HP and then he killed Luby somehow. I was like, what the hell? I'm yeah, not was... saying Luby's bad. And I'm not saying... I mean, I honestly, in the moment... Like, I think people in general who criticize in the perspective of like... The average fan who says, Gunba, why don't you play Tracer and Kepster? It's like, you're just a straight noob, bro. You don't know a damn thing about the game at a competitive level. So, like, people criticizing the coach is, like, is like silly. You don't even know. You might be right in terms of criticizing, but you don't actually have any reasoning or you're not able to, like, really defend it when the chips come down. So, Gunba has to defend himself from, like, 10 million people who are just saying, like, one-liners on the internet. It's, like, impossible. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's not, a, that's not a debate. That's not an argument. It's just people saying idiot, like, one-liner takes, think which are right or wrong they're just they have an epistemic stance that is irrespective of the truth like there's no interest in engagement it's just like uh, yeah sure. i want to flame gumba so i don't I, think... I don't take those seriously whatsoever to be to be clear i was gonna say the i was su i was more surprised as we went through this series i like i totally understand like having the comp and then kind of running with it but they were just kind of falling behind and they were like slowly just they were just kind of losing the game and I'm like losing the series. And I was like, is there going to be a point where they just switch the comp here, go away from the sim and just play something else? And that was more my, uh, yeah. that was more my yeah. thoughts during they, the they're series. Not as they're, they're not as practice on yeah. the sim comp, sim algo comp, and it's clear. Yeah, and it, it just felt like, well, it, they're, they're not getting what they want. Like they're not finding these fights and they're not finding these like round wins and like big team fights and the, the Twisted Mind's just kind of running around them in some instances. And I was like, Man, there's got to be at some point where you're like, okay, we're going to swap now. And that was so, that was what I was confused about. I just, about during I just this, during feel like it's, people are over-blaming the comp here. We're like, sure. how come Twisted Minds have so much more practice on Sim Malga? Why? Because, be, well, it's not the Malga, it's the Sim part. They have more practice on the Sim because the core of the team has existed for like a longer time, like a much longer time. Ents came together like this year, recently in the past couple of months for WCS, whereas Twisted Minds... Especially the core. We talk about just the core, like even without Kalex and Slay, they as the Team Saudi Arabia at the World Cup, and even with Kalex and Slay in the past Saudi E Leagues, etc., they've been together playing sim and their understanding of the comp is higher just from the history of the team together. Um yeah, so they're my, they're a better sim team. They are hundred percent in my opinion a better sim team. I think even, you know, Gumba and Ansel. But it's not like you're that. playing a sim mirror. I understand not wanting to play the sim mirror, but you're not playing a mirror where it really matters, your execution is so perfect. You're playing against well, it, so you just can't execute the sim comp well. They couldn't execute not playing, the sim... If you're playing the sim so mirror is where you delta, really will, like, get a gap. So the delta between... The delta between... So on paper, the Malga sim comp is supposed to counter the RAM comp that Twisted Minds plays. But the yeah. delta between where the comp gap was wasn't made up by the fact... You know, it, it, the, the player... I shouldn't say player skill, but the, the team practice and perhaps even player skill didn't allow for the comp gap to exist to allow them to beat. So Gumbo is correct on paper. Like, okay, if this comp is supposed to beat that comp, we're going to play the comp that's the counter. But unfortunately, like, the team didn't have the execution to beat the skill level that Twisted Minds had on the RAM to be able to, like, kind of take that down. And I akin to this to, like, basically the meme of, you know, the 0 IQ man versus the 200 IQ man, and there's the 100 IQ guy in the middle. 100 IQ guy in the middle says, you know, there's a guy yapping and blabbering and getting really angry. And the zero IQ guy is like, just play, just play Kev's Tracer. And then eventually the 200 IQ guy says, just play Kev's Tracer. But like to get to the 200 IQ guy, to make that journey happen, you have to, you have to actually go through a number of maps. You're like, oh wait, our counter isn't working. And unfortunately it took Ents three maps to realize that. So they got to where they should have been, but it took them three maps to get there. I also what feel like people are just like focused on the wrong thing. Like these la two matches, it's like exactly what you want from like Overwatch Esports when it comes to strategy going into matches. Because what did we see in the upper bracket? The biggest reason why NC Sports won was because they played Kevster on Echo into a Maga composition with a Symmetra and a Sojourn. And they played that matchup really well which forced twisted minds in the next match 
to change i mean this is a legendary I image that, I, I i did this for uh, i did this for decay playing hit scan or something back in the day i i love this meme format but but later in the grand finals twisted minds strategically they saw okay we can't play the maga composition because they're doing they're getting so much value from kev's echo and so we're not going to play maga instead we're going to play the ramatra and yup is going to be on tracer a lot of the time which forces ns esports to swap their composition and they thought they could win with the maga symmetra so i don't i i, I think if anything we should look at this as a really great example of a really smart team in Twisted Minds adapting during a tournament to find a win condition to beat a really good opponent in NC Sports. And they showed versatility with many different compositions and they ultimately beat NC Sports with kind of like going this ram comp and then even going Mauga to beat the ram comp. Like it was just, uh, or yeah, going Mauga to beat the ram comp. Yeah, like I, I, I think this was a really, really good tournament from Twisted Minds. And I think yeah. you should give them credit for their strategic adaptation. And, you know, NC Sports, they hadn't been, 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 been a team for a long time. Yes, they were probably under-practiced in some of those adaptations because they had less practice time and synergy, teamwork established, what have you. Um, but ultimately, Twisted Minds were the better team because of their incredible uh, adaptations. And it doesn't come down to Kebster Sim or whatever. Like, I think that's the wrong... I think that's a red herring in some ways. I, so. I totally agree, Johnny. I think we just not crediting Twisted Minds enough for, like, they put Ents in this spot. They put Ents on the spot to say, okay, like you beat us with your high skill, like with 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 like Kai Sojourn and and Kevster Echo, and you can win and best and like we get all of our players on like high aim skill heroes where they can play more individualistically, and we beat you. We, we like kind of, I mean, Twisted Minds made it reasonably close. I think close to the grand final was in that upper bracket final when when Twisted Minds lost, and then Twisted Minds went back to the drawing board. I mean, they were like one tricking this Malga comp against everybody, and it was working until so they played Ents. Ents beat them, and in one day. They came back with a better response that wins the tournament. I mean, yeah, you could say like, yeah, they just played the. I mean, I feel like there's just like so much cope. There's so much cope. <laughs> it's like it's like so much cope for just yeah. They 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 had a better strat on match better. day. They played better as a team. They had more versatility up, across multiple comps to continue to play really well. They they're the better team. Like they won. You know, like I don't I don't know. I just feel like there's so much cope for like we have to find some like fucking explanation for why Kevster lost it, it can't possibly be that he wasn't the best like he wasn't on the better team it was just it was it was someone not letting him play you like know you know EU's so back when that shit starts happening bro yeah yeah, yeah. I mean I feel like people like, people are just coping on another level to like find we'll some check. weird excuse for like bro they got gapped like that like that's so smart to ban your own maps if you have the flexibility to play yeah. more maps to trick somebody yeah. save it for the grand finals and in grand finals we ban all the maps we know you reviewed because we've been spamming them all tournament. We ban those. That's so, that's so sick. That's so fun. I wish I fucking thought of that. That's fucking genius. I text love them for that. Mine. Text yes. to mine to come up with that. I fucking um, love them. Like, that is so I, sick. You deserve to win a fucking tournament for, for having the creativity I agree. I agree. and the, and I agree. the strategy to do that. And it's just, mm -hmm. I hate the cope of like anything that t takes away from them is, is insane cope. But you know where the cope comes from. You know what the cope comes from. Like I said, the cope comes from the fact that I think most people thought Ents were actually the better team. And on paper, the, you know, the fact they beat them at the upper bracket, and then you know, the Kevster, the Kevster, obviously, he's an amazing player, so people are going to back Kevster. Um, and people just underestimated Twisted Minds, but, you know, yeah. people... Yeah, people what's paper to, worth? Is it ain't worth shit? People needed to, people you can need print to look your scrim bucks on it. We can we still wipe to, our asses people need, to, people need to look at the history of the fact that TM were the ones dominating Europe, and they were the more experienced team. And I think Although, I think realize, that is also cope. That is also cope to say, well, Twisted Minds have been winning in Europe, so as soon as we play a European game, they'll win. It's like, yeah, well, Kempster was dominating the fucking Overwatch League. <laughs> like, like it's, what, well, what do you mean? <laughs> like, because they play in Europe, they're better? I don't get <laughs> I, I feel like Twisted Minds is the underdog in the series, for me, with like, if you look at the, the players on the other team, if, they're, if they win this the match, well. they, win off, they win off of team play, they win off of strats, they went off of like they don't win on like a pure raw mechanical skill for me for me like that like they play play to their strengths as a team and they win because they made the game about their own strengths and they didn't let their opponents play to their strengths right if like, you if, that's if, to put differently to what if they... you had to bet on either of these teams to be bet like who is the best in six months yeah you'd probably I, bet nc sports or exactly twisted exactly twisted minds wins as the underdog but not through some like Oh, they're so lucky! It's like they're fucking better. I they got a better know, strat on match day that, that, that made underdog. them better. I, I just don't know if I agree that they're necessarily the underdog. They're not even mechanically less skilled either. They got fucking Quartz on the team, who most people hail as like some people say he's literally the best player in the world, Hardy. So it's like, um, 
yeah, like they don't they don't lack mechanics. UB is like actually insane as well. So this team has got agree, a lot going agree. For them. But you're telling me, you're telling me, you're putting together a team, and I tell you, you can have Kepster or UB. I'm sorry, UB's a great player, but I'm taking Kepster. There's like two people in the whole world. A mechanical, I'll take over a mechanical, a mechanical skill. I take Kepster, correct? But like, I think UB's got intangibles there. Yeah, he a, might be the right IGLs. player for for that team. But I mean, from the perspective, I totally get why people would have favored yeah. Ents going in. Why do you think Ents won the upper bracket final? Because they were able to play to their strengths, and when they did, they were way better. But when when Twisted Minds threw better strategy, better approach to the series, put the game in their own hands, and made their strengths dominate the series, they win. Like it wasn't think... about it, for me. It was it was. It was just about like them being the better team in the tournament, having the. I think that's what these types of this format is all thing. about. It's not about your performance over the course of a super long season. It's what do you show up today? This this is the correct, match. Correct. This is the grand finals. The final thing. The final thing is uh, I think the, you you the, one final thing and then I'll say one final thing and then we move on <laughs> to the next match. Yeah, yeah. I, I had nothing else further than this anyway. The final thing for me is that I think it was basically you look at Shambali as the last map, and you know where the cope of just put Kev to Tracer can die is the fact that. Yes, he looked way better on Tracer, and he absolutely fragged the fuck out on Tracer, but as an entire team, they still lost to Ram Mirror on Shambali. They beat Twisted Minds on the Ram Mirror on Survasa, right. lost it on Shambali. What I'm basically trying to say is it's not a guarantee just by mirroring that Ents is going to be the team that comes out from the final. I think, as Jake has explained numerous times now, TM were the much better team on the day, and despite how hard Kefsa could carry, and he carried the fuck out of the team when he, when he could on the Tracer when they eventually swapped, it still wasn't enough on the final map to get them through to, to further maps. So I don't know that necessarily playing the Ram from the get-go would have been enough. And I still think, by the way, TM would have had answered that. If even Ants decided to play the Ram with Kivs to Tracer from the get-go from the start, TM still have more comps that they can play with. I mean, they showed it, right? They played the them out good yeah. in the end and just were like, yeah, actually, this comp doesn't even work. We counter it. You just can't play the counter. Yeah, like, which, which which means to say that I think very big skill gap. It's like a demonstration. I think team were gonna win. I think TM were basically gonna win that finals almost no matter what with the extra like review of understanding how they lost in the upper bracket. Yeah. All right. I guess the one the one final thing I'll say as well is that I've seen this over and over again in the community, and I more if 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 the community or people who comment on Reddit or whatever, if they if they like a person they will argue in favor of their decisions. They will more often than not find themselves agreeing with that person's decisions or defending their decisions. And I think that in general, Gunba is slightly more disliked within the community by, by fans on Reddit or whatever, like, oh, he's mean to his players. And so I actually do think that people will, will try to find the reasons to criticize Gunba because of that or... Um, disagree with decisions or like oh why didn't you do that why didn't you do that and i i i think that's just i i think that's just stupidity um some people were undermining his coach of the year win last year because toronto defiant find success with someone rapal and uh merit without him on toronto defiant and i i just think it's quite stupid to be honest if if you like you, you gun is one of the best coaches in the world i mean you you were even on like i even listened to uncoachable and i think the guys on uncoachable were just like yeah gun might be the best coach in the world like if you had to pick one coach to like build a team like those guys i i couldn't re misremember because this was like three four months ago so i apologize if i get it wrong but th those even those guys like some of the best coaches in the scene were just like yeah gun might be the best coach in the world and so like if that doesn't fucking reaffirm how much respect uh his decisions have then like who who are you like come on come on guys um i i, I think it's silly that you, you criticize this decisions like that anyway anyway let's move on here uh so i'm gonna try to hit two birds in one stone here uh talk about ex oblivioni and space station gaming so we'll just we'll just talk about exos win over space station gaming of course because these are um two great teams in the EMEA region um <laughs> and then we can move on to north america as well so um talking about questioning some coaches decisions a lot of a lot of people in the community too were just like why space station gaming play dive no makes sense to me why are they doing this um and obviously ex oblivion was a surprise team of um ema uh you know a, a group of relatively unknown players who've been grinding and contenders found success taking down space station gaming chase one of the standout tank players in the region shockwave had a great performance in the damage role and um you know i, I think that crispy and canal were really solid in the back line too so a huge win from ex oblivion ex oblivion only taking down space station gaming joss as you were as you were oh you didn't even commentate this match i, I believe but uh 
You know, yeah, 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 you're, you're a fellow European like me. Come on, how did it feel to see X Oblivione pop off and take down space in your gaming? Did I not cast this? Oh, no, I didn't. No, I was doing an A. Shit. Yeah, you were doing an A. Uh, yeah. Um, what did you say? What was the question? <laughs> no, I, As like, European. it was hype. I was supposed to be European. It, oh, it European has hype to be upsets European. of the tournament. Feels great, bro. Feels great. No, Shockwave. I, I, no, I do remember this match now. Yeah, because Shockwave just went absolutely fucking beast mode. I was shocked, actually, because I thought, I, I think a lot of people thought as well that Space Station were going to be, you know, in the finals, maybe against Ents kind of deal, but... Dude, I mean, I'm just happy good fucking European Overwatch is back. I mean, Jake, don't speak for like 10 minutes, but uh, European Overwatch <laughs> is like, yeah, we're so back, baby. We got those hit scans on log, Kevster, Shockwave. And I think this is some of the best performances I've seen from Shockwave just in his career. Yeah, um, he put up I huge think, numbers. Yeah, I think comparatively uh, to his time in the Overwatch League, like, although when he was on Fusion, he was pop, pop, putting up a few numbers there, but uh, I don't know. Compared to like what he is now, he's definitely the, one of the most improved players coming from the Overwatch League back to the European region, I'd say, because um, he didn't have the high highs of success in, in I mean, Al. Um I feel like but, it's less his improvement. Well, I mean, I'm sure he's improved, but like- It's so just a better else. team of surrounding him I think this is a well. team that, that is playing around him, you know, that is yeah. like giving him a real chance to be the star. I think he's he's been in a lot of sure. teams where he hasn't been the star player. He like came in to play on stacked rosters. And then naturally, either you're not going to get the resources. Maybe you're not having the agency to like lead the team and make the calls. And you're not even getting the playtime. Exactly, well. exactly. Like, you have to share playtime with people. But this is a spot where he's showing what he can do, given a real like like a fair shot, as I'd put it, like or like a good yeah. shot. He's showing what he can do, and I have no doubt that his comms are going to be like a big factor for this team. Him being the veteran, I'm sure that people like respect his experience on the team and that his read on how to play and and what comps to play and everything is highly valued on the team. And so I think he's just in a position where where we can see what I think how good he's been all along is how I would put it. Yeah, he's definitely been like a hidden gem. I think. I think with, I think uh, Kanael was really impressed me too, especially in this series. A lot of kills from the carry, a lot of individual plays, and the and the ult's always on point, which is not easy to do in the Winston comp here. Uh, but but also for Space Station, I can't help but feel that this is a really huge disappointment for them. Maybe not yeah. really huge is, is exaggerating it. I think they probably I don't know would they have beaten Twisted Minds. I don't know. Some people Probably were not. saying because of like the rock, paper, scissors Probably that they would do not. better. I mean, I, I, I haven't given it any thought, but they seem like it, some weirdly, people I think said they, they might have, have a better chance. chance against Twisted Minds than EXO did because I think SSG, right. they are really competent as a rush team. Like I think in a RAM, in a RAM mirror, whether it's RAM sim or whatever, like they're, they're very experienced on the sim. They know exactly how to min-max that hero. So I think maybe the match against Twisted Minds, we would have seen more of like the, the high level execution on, on the sim mirror. Um, Whereas EXO was really locking this Winston comp, which is great, but then you play against Winston Mines and they are super happy to play against Winston all game and they will shit on you. So I feel like Space Station, if they won this match, they probably could have been a tougher opponent for Twisted Mines. Whether it would have been enough, no one can say. But I do feel like, you know, this is, a, it's like, it is it is unfortunate for them. But, but to say they shouldn't play Dive, for me, is like incredibly stupid to say oh yeah like space station just play malga sim forever bro that just you're basically asking to have london spitfire be forever and be like congrats you get fifth place every tournament like space yeah. station these players they've been there they've done that it's not enough anymore you know what i mean they they're not playing for fifth place or seventh we made it to the Hardy tournament great not job a bad dive tank anymore like exactly he's, exactly he's, he's not bad. He's and you've got psycho on tracer you've got, yeah, psycho, exactly. on tracer. You've got well, psycho on tracer okay. you've got oh, i mean i think on. There's he, been a, I, I wouldn't was, say he's like Hadi the best. was not as good 2021 as he was in 2022 and 2023. Sure, I'm talking about in context Europe. I'm talking about in context of Europe. You, you, right. You'd be hard pressed to find like that many better types. I don't think you really can. Like, it's not really better type. Every time it's like find a better dive tank, everyone's like Shikara. It's like not really, guys. It's, you're trolling. So, <laughs> no offense to JK. No offense to JK, but like, no, that's not that's not how that works. Um, I think it was funny because the, the gun by interview, he was just like, yeah, we jazz. probably need to add like a dive tank from Europe, and I was like, wait a minute, who should even add? <laughs> like, it's who like would no you one. Add? Like, you can't. There's nobody, <laughs> dude. So Get like, fearless, so bro. Bro. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, dude, cloudy bit of practice, Winston. That's, 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 that's what they go to. Um. <laughs> No, what was I going to say? Yeah, I think the, the narrative around Space Station slash London is very is very interesting because on one hand, they're like, yeah, this is a one-trick team, bro. They can only play in Ryan Rush. They can't play anything else. On the other hand, it's like, bro, why don't they just play Ryan? Why is this team trying to play down? They should just play their Ryan. It's like, which one is it, guys? You're either criticizing them for being a one-trick or you're criticizing them for trying to not be a one-trick. It doesn't even make sense. That, like, there's they, like they, conflicting. With Astro and Psycho, these guys have to be committed to playing everything if they that stay one really trick forever point. i love when you themselves. made that point with this roster 
And I like, just they've upgraded the deathmatch so much. They've upgraded the deathmatch drastically. And like Admiral was was okay at Lucio for the purposes of like playing rush, but for playing dive with Lucio, your Lucio the deathmatch matters a ton, and Astro is the best yeah. in the world. So as, as as good as Admiral is, there's no way Astro is a big upgrade in the, in the Lucio deathmatch over almost anyone in the world. I would say like that's not even shade to Admiral. And then Psycho, obviously very experienced on Tracer and many flankers. So they 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 got the pieces that they that they really most needed to enable them to play these comps. I mean, for me, like this, this so, is funny from a coaching perspective. How can you you criticize them for playing these comps where they they finally got the players that unlock their potential as a team? And you're saying, oh, I'll just go back to the way it was, bro. It's like ultimate hindsight. That's why it's why Reddit stuff is so stupid to me. That's, There's that's always these the, obvious the holes in people's arguments. The narrative is contradictory because they, they're criticizing them for playing a one trick and then criticizing them, criticizing them for leaving the one tricks. It doesn't make sense. But anyway, two things I want to comment on is, is um, um, yeah, I think the Winston look isn't necessarily that bad, but where the difference is for me for some of the other comps, first of all, they didn't play the Winston that much. I think the, the way people talked about the SSG Winston, it was like they literally just one-tricked Winston Dive the whole series. And when I had to go back and right. watch the series, because I didn't get to catch it live, I'm like, yo, hang on a second. Where's the Winston Dive? Because I'm just seeing them play Orissa the whole time. Right? I think they play like majority of the comps that were non-Winston non compared to Winston. Um, oh, they're playing that quite aside, a bit of Winston. Yeah, they... No, are they... If you actually look through the series, they were. I think they were playing like majority Orissa actually. It, I don't it, know. I don't know. I, I'm not gonna say they played majority Winston, but a meaningful amount, I'd say. Meaningful amount. They definitely played a meaningful amount, but the way it was sounded, it was made out like they played 90% Winston. No, so there was, was quite like a, not, a lot of Morgan there too. Yeah, there was a Obvious there was a high reasons. variance of things. Um, and the thing about I wanted to comment on Jake's comment about um the Malga and Sim, uh, potential for SSG. And um, I had Kosaurus on the on the post show. So when after I did the co stream, I invited a couple guests on. One of them was Kosaurus, and I asked him his opinion on. SSG losing, and he he dropped this nugget, which I thought was very interesting. Um, this iteration of sim meta, if we if we have like a proper sim comp, the sim Malga stuff is not like the sim Ryan stuff we've seen in the past, and it's not because of the Ryan or the Malga. It's because of the extra DPS on top of the sim. Because if you look at the past sim comps that London SSG have played, we're talking about like Sim Bastion, um, Sim May, right? These are like not the heavy fragging, super hyper carry type DPSs. But now we're playing Sim Sojin. And the comment that Cass added that I thought was quite insightful is that TM are going to be way better at that, not only because they're super practiced in the Sim and Yubi's amazing with Sim, but they have motherfucking quartz. And that is, I, I, I hate to say it, no, no offense to Sparker, a gigantic upgrade to Sparker on the hero. I'm sure Sparker maybe even agrees. It's just quartz, guys. Quartz is he's leagues above gigantic. Sparker, unfortunately. I think like no, you're overstating it. I think he's maybe. better I'm being for sure. I'm being but I think Sparker is like good let's enough. Not, let's Sparker not get caught in semantics. Let's not get caught in the semantics. Hit scans hold up, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's not get caught in the semantics here. Maybe I used the wrong word. Okay, that's fine. What I'm saying is like, the point to be made here is it's not the same as, oh, London, just go back to Rush. You're good at the Sim compositions. It's not Sim May or Sim Bastion. We're playing Sim Sojourn now. And they need to have the extra fragging power. A lot of Twisted Minds, like a lot of the fact of them being able to do what they do is because they have course and i slay in my stream at some point afterwards as well where he was just typing my chat and he's basically like i don't know maybe he's joking and said it but he's basically like yeah we just we just gotta let our dps do the work here you know we just gotta enable our dps he basically said those words Par i'm paraphrasing here uh, i don't know he's probably not joking maybe he's half joking because it's a bit of a meme just let the dps carry but that team really I mean, does that's, 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 overwatch. Go kill. that's overwatch if that's you literally are the game. let's go kill if you're on a great team the game, great damage enable your players, DPS, guys. just this let them not... cook no, uh, I know. Really being a tank and support, this like, is good so non controversial. Players. You're playing Lucio Kiriko. What the fuck do you think your job is? Like, you do a little I mean, damage on Kiri actually, Lucio, but you actually, dare to actually, enable the DPS. Actually, actually, they're playing Lucio Mori, first of all, Jake, just being honest. Second of all, <laughs> regardless, well, some, with, with, with the Malga, you play Kiri. With the Malga, Sim, the point and is, Sim, the, point is the point is, everyone knows that Twisted Minds, the star player is Quartz. So, Quartz Go Kill is, like, legitimately part of that team, even though that would be, like, way too simplistic to describe their team. It's also kind of accurate as well. I feel like it's total cope to say this, actually Sim is so different with Sojourn. It's not. It's, not it's so just not. But it's not that different. A lot okay. like, you're cope coping so board, hard. Yes. They no made the DPS so different. Twenty no higher. So different. It's it's no, but, it is but different. Surely, it's different surely enough. SSG. It's different enough that SSG don't. I don't think SSG. I don't think they're gonna auto TMN win against Twisted Minds, but I think they will play the Rush Mirror. No. You think, I don't think you think they're so think... scared? Do you think no, no, the team no, no, has no, no, played no, no. Rush only for 10 years? I don't put words in your mouth. 
That's not what I said. What I said is that I think TM uh, a better at the mirror, and B, I think TM will counter comp because they have the capability to play way more comps, in my opinion. Sure, sure. So, I'm not saying SSG will win, but I think EXO got like just like super stomped by TM. It was like the least close game of the whole bracket, and maybe it would have been less extremely not close if it was SSG. Um, I, I I want to I want to move on here pretty soon. I want to make sure that we give uh, Ex Oblivion only their flowers, but I don't think we need to like super expand on the team. I think we can all agree that it, it was a super exciting upset. That you know we're huge fans of their performance. So looking forward to seeing more of them. I think we can all agree that you know it was just overall a really good team, and um, you know I'm especially looking forward to see more from Chase. So I think we're all super excited about Ex, Ex Oblivion. The final question I want to talk about Space Station Gaming is just like. Is there anything you'd like to see them add to the roster? I'm not saying you gotta you gotta kick someone. I'm not saying you have to let go of someone. If you just had to add one type of player to Space Station for Stage Two, who would who would you add here, Joss? I'm gonna, go I, you for, I, I'm gonna go with you for, first, Joss. I don't think you would. I, I don't think this is a team that is in dire need of like, oh, we need a projectile player. We need like, although they don't really, you know, the the the. All the uh, DPS and like tanks, like dive tank, you know, rush tank, whatever. All those lines are getting so blurred now in Overwatch 2 because you just kind of have to play everything. But I don't think this team needs much at all. I mean, maybe... Oh, no. I, I can't think of a piece really that you'd go like, oh, we desperately need this. And I think to make a more meta point as well about this upset, it is almost a good thing that this happened. Because it proves the region isn't just like, okay, these teams are the best. Okay, they're just going to roll. You know, it's like a, not like a, a Japan uh, OWCS where it's like, okay, it's only Varel. Okay, it's only two teams. You know, I, I think this is in a way a good thing. Even though I, d I did want Space Station to win. But these players that have not played No Watch League, on, some of them have on the other side, Ex um, versus players that have been around the scene for a, longer, uh, a lot longer of a time. You know, it's good that we're seeing these upsets, upsets now. Yeah. Because later down the line, yeah, it will be a lot more difficult to do that, uh, I would imagine. But it proves there's a lot of talent in, in the European region still uh, that can be fighting against each other and actually have good, entertaining, like, close games. Um, not, obviously, this game, which is a 3-0. But, but for on the roster point, I don't think you need to add much. Gonna be honest. Uh, especially with the... I think their backline's incredibly solid. I think Astro, one of the best in the world. Best to ever, best to ever do it on Lucio. That's really ins good, too. Insane. And like being able to permaplay play Lucio, especially in Overwatch 2, I think is a must. It's very rarely going to be meta, I think, in Overwatch 2, which doesn't require a fucking Lucio, you know? So like, you so can't far, argue with so that. Far. I think Lucio just needs a huge nerf and then eventually he won't be played. Over sure, yeah, yeah. If Lucio gets a, gets a massive nerf, then it's like, okay, maybe we need to run double flex, you know? But uh, right at this moment in time, I can't name a single person on this roster that I, you know, add to what to help I the think team can also like, use eh. backbone to play flex he did that before right he sure the yeah flex support if it's a double that, flex for meta so right and really i think the flexibility no, there is just that. Un almost unparalleled <laughs> That's right? i remember backbone everything. playing fucking zen <laughs> backbone like, zen. that was so ridiculous <laughs> yeah did okay, so no, like for i don't think uh meta. i don't think they need to add much or change much here. yeah i feel like they don't there's no pieces missing <laughs> i mean you could like maybe you upgrade players like better players or whatever but like there's not you're not really like Sure, give me Phil. Oh, give, give me, uh, give yeah, me. Yeah, like actually get happy. Houston on Outlaws, then... the whole team, you know. Okay, like, yeah, sure. I'm always down to sign happy, you know. Sure, yeah, exactly. But but no, but this team doesn't need to change. No, I agree. And I I think the biggest thing I was. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say another point too. Please don't fucking change, because yeah yeah yeah. Give the time. problem, I think, the one of the big problems with Overwatch esports over the last few years, and this has only been been a problem for certain teams, but it's been so apparent that it's like. Well, okay, what player are they signing next? What team are they going to sign next? Teams don't stick together. And they never have done in Overwatch League. There's been very few times where you can be like, okay, half the Overwatch League, more than half the Overwatch League is sticking together into a new year. Maybe they add one player or two. Like there's, or maybe I'm just thinking of the egregious, like anomalies, Paris Eternal, Vegas Eternal, uh, LA Valiant and shit like that. I don't want a situation where we're chur like players are just churning in and out of teams. So... Yeah, I was saying, Unfortunately, it seems like that might be the case for a few teams. I mean, and uh, yeah, it, I, I don't even know I if do you want, want to... teams to churn. I think it's the right play. If you're not if you're SSG, I mean you got top four. Like top four is not blow the team up. 
Yeah. But if you're like, we didn't qualify or we got absolutely oh, annihilated. Sure. Yeah. Then, uh, let me yeah. let me preface that in like the, the team. top teams right now. Top four like, is you don't yeah. you don't torpedo the team. Maybe you, you can need, upgrade you a player. But share. this is Christopher we're talking about. Surely, surely even the fucking redditors can respect Christopher enough that they can make good decisions as a yeah. coach, right? <laughs> if, if not, Christopher, like, this team's got who? the friendship buff. This, this team's got the friendship buff going. You can't break that up. Yeah, exactly. unless I, unless uh... it's Admiral. Unfortunately, no. Um, <laughs> I I don't think there's anything you can really. I don't think you, anything you can change. Like honestly, no. you, you're gonna no, get a exactly. Korean player in on ping. What's Korea ping to EU? Is dog shit. It's, no, like you can't. No, two hundred or something. Awful. It's terrible. It's awful. Yeah. Like you're not gonna get a Korean Opposite. player. It, I and I'm I'm like ninety percent sure SSG is not gonna pay for of import how do you even import to europe like i've i've is zero there a tank like, vacuum in europe um, should i go pro again you yo i think, I think, now I think that's hard we're waiting on johnny how's, how does your monkey you, look yo this my is... monkey was my best hero then in my career Dude, come on 2017 let's this is, this bring this back, back when nobody knew how to juggle that was that was crazy <laughs> let me bro, let me tell you what i think is missing on the team crazy man anyway move on what i think is what i think is missing on ssg is not necessarily like they need to get this new player i don't think they need new players what i'd like to see is this um, for whatever reason, I don't know if this is Christopher's decision or maybe Hardy has potential issue here, but we don't see Hardy play Doom for some reason. And I think I'm quite Doom pilled, and I think Doom's still okay, very good in the meta. Good. You look at someone play Doom on Toronto, we're going to talk about Toronto soon. Excellent. That's what you want to see on a dive tank. That's what you see on a tank. You even see Chase in the same matchup versus Hardy. The ending of Esperanza, where Chase just punches Psycho out of nowhere and just cleans the map up. And it's just, she led that map, by the way, and then they just lost the map. Chase gets a chase, chase enables a couple of kills in Doom, and that's it, game over. For whatever reason, not even this game, but across like all of SSG games, I basically have never seen Hardy on Doom in any of these official yeah, matches. Yeah, Doom is hard. I don't even know and, Doom. Um, that here is complicated. That, that's a problem. So I, I don't know. If it's, pass, so I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a Christopher <laughs> decision. I don't know if it's a Christopher decision or if it's a Hardy hero pool issue, but that needs to probably be addressed at some stage. Assuming that Doom stays in the meta, if Doom stays in the meta, it needs to be addressed. The other thing is. Is that I think Lon uh, Landon's best hero is obviously BAP, and they're, they're not currently in a. In, we're either not in a BAP mirror, uh, uh, BAP meta rather, or you know they're just not able to play BAP at the current time. That's probably a bit of a nerf for the team. So either um, they need to find their way back into a Lucio BAP situation where both Funny Astro and Landon can be on their best heroes, or um, I don't know. I'm not saying there's an issue on the support line. I mean, but do you think Landon's a limited player in the sense that he needs to play BAP or they have to force it? I, I, don't, I don't think, think the Curry's. I don't think the Curry is like as good as the BAP. I watched his Curry. Seems good. Like you don't have fine. to do anything special. You could be like, you could get shoe and it'll kill more stuff. But like, it's fine. It, it's Landon fine a enough. Problem? I don't see this as a problem. It's not a problem unless you want to be the best. It's not like Hadi. Like Hadi not playing Doom is a legitimate problem. I agree. Like I've never fucking seen him play the hero. He probably can't play it well. I would just, if you never touch no, it, I'm not saying, I'm pretty sure I'm not saying they're losing. I'm not saying they're losing because they're not on BAP, but I think if you want to min max the player strengths, if they can find a way to get back on Lucio BAP, that is a way. We're, talk, we're not talking about SSG beating EXO. Their goal isn't to beat EXO. Their goal is to beat Twisted Minds and then eventually take on the Koreans. That should be Christopher's goal. And just, I know it's his goal. So if you want to do that, they have to actually min max the roster. I just don't agree with the BAP call. I think that's like, like Landon can play all the flex supports. I think he's pretty good at all of them. I mean, I agree. He's probably the best at BAP, but I don't think the difference is big enough. Where I think, like, I think he's let's go I, off meta and play this BAP, might be hot take. This might be hot take, but I think he's only like globally elite at BAP and the other heroes. He's good, but he's globally elite at BAP. Does that make sense? So like that's, but you don't, you don't force that. Like the, you have to be like, I cannot play the other hero to force your best hero. Like Kevster doesn't force. Tracer, he plays Echo when it's better, or like I mean, to be fair, Kevster, he plays what Gumba tells him. So let's be honest, he, he, but, he's he uh, plays whatever. Like like he's very good at all the heroes. But I mean, like you don't force, like you only force that. Like we're gonna play a BAP strat because you got like you don't do that because he's so good at BAP. You do it because he can't. I don't think play I said force. I don't think I said force. I just mean like they need to they need to play towards this. You said find their way to a BAP Lucio meta, but no one is playing BAP, so that means you're forcing BAP if you're playing it. Like you're the only team doing it. You're forcing it. I wouldn't say no one's playing it, but I think it's it's it doesn't look like it's the meta currently. But we'll see what I happens in the future. See, if they, I saw like how many baps were two percent bap play time. Any UNA? I would call that yeah, forcing if you're pretty playing. Low. Kiri okay. is monstrously good right now. Yeah. The Kiri ult is the best ult in the Listen, game. I think none. I think we're getting away from the point. I didn't use the word force. You use the word force, not me. <laughs> I the point the point oh, that we're trying okay, to say is sure. the point we're trying to the point we're trying to say here is. Is oh, for that. oh yeah, hey, oh yeah, and oh, no, no. And uh, we're actually not, but we won keep games. Keep this up, keep this up. Keep we this won up. games. That's where they win. Look at that green, baby. Team Sweden.
beat Denmark to wrap Road it up. Misfits. Let's go, baby. I lost to Costa, Wait, but that is that what it is. That means you were oh, technically on the same team as Costa. Because you Costa played with you, bro. Yeah, oh, shit, they they that. did they did sweep us. Goodness. That was that was a brutal series. That was uh, that was this that one, was hard. You know you like to forget this one. It's Dude, one of those ones. Fu they came out with fucking. They came out with Winston comp and they played like the Genji. Dude, they they're it's a good team. Winston Punk, Genji. Trill. They, they, they no, it was it was a great excuse me. CGM they were great at that Genji comp, and then they played Korea in the first round of World Cup and lost. But yeah, also right. our match against China, we were just like, oh, China, China is probably pretty good, <laughs> and there was like the start of like Korea establishing some kind of dominance. Uh, you've lost it, Solomon. There it is. What was Team China that year? Yeah. Press, press China. Uh well fuck well oh well, it's like twenty eight just bro. yeah okay, yeah Crystal Shy Leave Gushway Late this Young Eveltals and we're like oh China's probably pretty good and we just faced them and they like dominated like it was just disgusting so team. it is what it is we we need to beat Costa but we couldn't make it happen uh they pro they probably have good coaches too I don't know anyway let's uh, let's move on to North America and I'm gonna start up I gotta cut the fuck Thank off I'm gonna so be much. honest. <laughs> Yeah, but you know that's how it goes. When you top of forty minutes, it's hard for me to. Uh, we, we've discussed the EMA long enough. Okay, I got. Check, I, I check gotta step to, in check as needs a host to stop cutting somewhere. me off in, in the future. I'm gonna be honest. You check need to stop having shit takes, Welcome bro. to the desk, buddy. You gotta, you gotta, I go you through this every broadcast. You gotta take the fight. Every halftime, I go through this with Jake. So you don't worry. You gotta you get do used battle, to it. baby. We're in the Coliseum here. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna talk, I'm gonna talk unbelievably hard over you next time you speak. We we'll do a separate talk podcast. We we'll do a separate podcast. This, this guy this, uh, went to debate power. class, bro. We gotta step it up. We gotta. I, I'm not debate, afraid of debating. Debate lessons <laughs> in, our, uh, in, our, in, our, in our in our spare time. That being said, though, you know, as long as I'm not there, don't don't care. start fighting, guys. Become the That's because then Reddit's gonna come out and be like, why does Jake and I will hate each other? Okay, we we can't be fighting on the podcast, Sweet. all right? Because this guy keeps yapping. It doesn't fucking let anyone else talk. Like all Jesus right, Christ. All right. I know you have a little sleep, bro. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry, Avril. Anyway, we'll, I'll right. I'll get you some. I'll gift you some subs or something. Just take it easy. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. I'm gonna boot boot out the next topic like this. Here we go, Avril. Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this as an alley oop to you. Okay. All you gotta do Let is Jake like. Start. Let Jake start. <laughs> oh come on! No, don't Jeez. don't. I know what you're gonna do. We're don't starting do this, the Reddit Avril. Anyway, all right. Here goes here goes the alley oop. I'll go. It, I'll throw it to you, Jake. This will actually be more right. fun. If Toronto Defiant, after their dominant performance against Timeless in the finals. Went head to head with Falcons and Wack. How would they do? Are they are they top three in the world? Are they could they beat Wack or Falcons the way they played in the finals? I think they can, man. I think they can. Are I they watched that Merit. Good? I just saw. I watched Merit. It's hard to say because you know yeah, they other dominated the rest of NA, and it's easy to say yeah it's NA they're dominating NA and maybe the maybe the the but like for me I I think more like I watched this the raw play from Merit and it was like. I'm telling you, it's different, man. I, like, Rocket and Chopper were not playing bad in the Grand Finals. They weren't like, oh, we're spaghetti and we can't play. We're so scared. Merritt just fucked them, dude. He just Merit hit. Was You're not supposed to hit those. And he hit them over and over again. He did against M80 the day before. It was like, this team is not competitive with them. And I just watched Merritt. I'm like, what the fuck do you do? This guy fucking doesn't miss. And it, it's not like they're they're shitting the bed and they're missing and they're giving him ten chances. No, he hits the first fucking shot when he sees them. He just deletes yeah. them. How do you play? It's like within five frames. Just it's disgusting. It's, like yeah. that's not Rocket is a freak on Tracer. He's very very good. And Merritt just snapped his neck and moved on with his day. It's gross. I feel like Merritt is the best player in the world right now. That that's my best player in the world. Wow. That I, think, I mean. I think. That That's is an strange. incredible take given you have like the proper and lip and yes, yes. Because and... it's it's just from like watching the raw play. Like, dude, those shots are that's like a crazy you can't do this over and over again. Like, that's your pinnacle. You can do one match like that, great. One map like that, great. But he just kept doing it. He doesn't the whole stop. Series, yeah. It's like I it you have to start to believe that's his it's level dumb. now. Like, where has this guy been? He was he was at his he he, he won the world championship and he got he got significantly better. I don't. I don't understand. But like, I just watched him play. I'm like, I don't see that shit in other regions. I mean, I don't see. I never. I actually haven't seen that shit before. I haven't seen. I didn't recognize your game, Merritt. So I just <laughs> watching him play. I'm like, that's freaky. Like this was like watching reminiscent of watching proper when when Sojourn first came out, and it was just like, dude, he just fucking clicks them, and like he just gets to kill every goddamn fight. It's like, how do you win? I, I also feel like it's the case, right, where you start out like two maps and Merit plays like that, and the enemy team almost becomes like hesitant 
or like they question their decision making because they're like, oh well, I can't peek because Smirt will kill me, and you sacrifice positioning in fights, and it just it just downhill. It's like an avalanche. It just it just it, it just the of the fight, I mean, it's not like it's just Smirt. That's that's the thing. It's like someone is the perfect tank for Overwatch 2, right? Like he, you don't need a second tank. There's not even a thought in your head that you would ever swap your tank player. Sugar Free, I feel like is that same thing on. He can play Sugar Free's hit scan is probably also top tier. Maybe not. I mean, I think they're much better with Merit hit scan, Sugar Free Flanker. That's better for them, like for both of the players. But they're though can handle anything. I think RuPaul Vega is very impressive. I guess if there's any question, it's like maybe a double flex support meta, but I've seen Vega and ranked. He is like very elite on the other supports too. I don't know, man. This Toronto, I mean, it's easy to be okay. Maybe NA is not the best. Maybe overall, the rest of the teams they aren't as good, but that just watching their level, it looks. It looks like global elite to me. If you look at like past seasons of Overwatch League, the stuff they're doing from a raw mechanical level is on that. It is like in that like we win the Overwatch League type level, and, yeah. and their team play everything. Three out of five play. did win the Overwatch League like six months. Exactly, ago. exactly. So I don't think it's that crazy <laughs> to say that they could be the best in the world. Three fresh champs. Sugar Free was like maybe runner up rookie of the year last year. At least for me, he was runner up rookie of the year. Um, and then Vega, you know, Vega's the biggest unknown, but I think that gives them more top end potential if Vegas if Mega's potential as a player is realized and he can play to that same super high level and be super flexible against Wack and stuff. What do you think, Avril? You watch Korea more than any of us, so um I think Toronto have the capability to be the one of the best, if not the best in the world. The problem is that their scrim quality is just gonna be lower than Korea. And I think that that we can all yeah. agree on. Um, and the other thing is when you look at Wack Falcons there's not really any holes on that team. So if we're gonna, you, when you start running down one-to-one -one on teams, um, you know, you start getting to questions like, well, Vega is a question mark, but then you get to the WAC Falcons, like, well, Chorong and Chio are not question marks at all. We don't even start to question that. Um, and neither are any of the other players. Like, you, there's just zero question marks for any of the actual, you know, the top-end skill for any of those players. And you you start getting the question of, like, merit versus lip, merit versus proper. Um the only play you're sort of missing from that conversation, maybe above, maybe a couple others, but you know, you're missing shy from that conversation. You basically have the world's best surgeons in that, um, in that convo right now. So maybe the argument, if I was to play devil's advocate a little bit against Toronto, while, while I do agree, I think they're one of the best, the devil's advocate would probably be that obviously timeless aren't the best team to test Toronto. And I think timeless would agree with that. Uh, but neither are M80. I don't think there's any NA team that is a good test of Toronto right now. There was that one game but Toronto went to five against Timeless, and I think that was mainly Toronto underplaying. And I think they would even admit they probably played poorly that series. But um, even talking to Cass, Cass believes that if you were to put three and three together right now, top three teams in A versus top three EU, EU actually probably wins that out because they have top three teams on average are actually higher. And that's probably more of an indictment against Timeless and M80 than an indictment against Toronto itself. So um, Toronto realistically only have the other NA teams and the top Europeans to scrim, and I think Korea, just their capability of playing against much harder competition, having zero gaps and zero holes, zero question marks in the roster probably leads towards the safer bet still being towards the Falcons or gaps, uh, Falcons or side. Yeah, I mean, that sounds about right. I think, uh, yeah, I definitely agree with Merritt just being on a different level. Like, the shots he, the consistent shots on the tracers specifically was just like this, what the fuck's happening? Like, how? And like, the way, sometimes there were a few like clips that we had where he was just like boom and he's just like it's, it's like a cs you know sometimes when you see like the cs pros like old school and it's just like boom insta headshot and they're back to holding their fucking ang like that shit is fucking in overwatch like uh, and like the movement in overwatch 2 and like especially tracer it's just like what like how how do you how do you fight against that and like like you were saying jake it's just He's just moving different. Like, the whole team moves different. It's it's ridiculous. I would say, and I agree with Avril's point too, in the fact that they don't have the toughest... Well, they got hard scrim opponents, but nothing like, like Korea. I think which is going to be fun... The, the thing that's going to be the most fun this year is getting to Dallas and seeing Toronto Defiant play against Wack and Falcons. Like, that will... And I, I still think Korea will probably win uh the the region itself either yeah, that's a good or bet. Falcons, whoever whoever make it or like obviously they both make it but if they do play toronto i think they will end up winning but i think this is also very good still for the north american region to have like a strong team like this because you don't want it like league where it's just like well 
Korea just win everything. China win we everything. We made it to Worlds, guys. Yeah, Good job, like, NA. Yeah, it's like That's... the NA joke. The literal <laughs> NA joke is like, we made it to Worlds, baby. We're getting uh, $2 million a year. I'm living in LA. I'm fucking <laughs> only playing like two days a week, and I don't give a shit about Solo Queue games and fuck. And like, and like uh, we, we just go out in groups. No, like North America is going to be sick because we have teams like Toronto to find, and, the scr- and Timeless too, to be fair, right? And like the scrim culture is going to be better too, which is uh, which is fantastic compared to, compared to League. Um, I agree. It's got to be the safer bet to pick Korea, but I believe but in Toronto. It is the safer I, I'm bet. Starting like, to believe. Yeah, but I really do think there's going to be a point where uh, teams like Toronto to find are going to be like, okay, we're going to take these guys all the way to map number five, and we might just win here. Like, I, I, I think it's a safe bet to take Korea. Uh, would I bet on it? Fuck no, because I definitely think Toronto Defiant can stand up to the to the gods of Overwatch. And if these guys are in man. form, man. I will bet on. Yeah, exactly. Like, if, if, it, if this and form, I, I think a players lot like Vega can like, still only get better. Just, that, I judge like, a lot just by like the raw. Like watch them play. Like the reason I was yeah. so hype on Rocket is I was watching him play. I was like, what the fuck are these pulse bombs? Like, like that's not normal. It's not like he's just like playing normal tracer. He's good at tracer. His aim is really good. He's just doing some like fucking. Blink stick somebody I, I didn't even see on my screen. I'm like, what? Like, like when I see somebody do things, and I, I mean, I play the game at pretty high level. I'm like top top 100 is like usually where I'll be in DPS. And when I see people do things that I don't understand, and I like don't see how they could even see that play, and I'm like, like you know, I, I understand it's like, oh, they hit a really hard shot, but sometimes they do stuff. I'm like, like literally, what the fuck? Like I wouldn't even try that or like consider that an option. And yeah. they're just doing it over and over and over again. That's crazy to me your level is that much above like even a even a relatively high level you know because that's the crazy thing about esports is the very best players are not just like better they're 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 like twice as good somehow like people somehow continue to keep improving while they're at the top and if you can maintain that and you've got the culture and the discipline which i feel like toronto seems like they have but how focused everybody is every time we hear from them they're they're locked the fuck in um and know. that helps I'm, the I'm players that haven't had the top experience too. Like Vega specifically on that team. That guy's probably got so much more to give that we don't really understand yet because he's playing with three champions and also has the backing of Toronto Defiant. Same with Timeless too. They don't have like the backing like Toronto Defiant, but they're playing against them routinely, like in scrims and stuff. Like they're going to be improving at a rapid rate as well. Like this, yeah, it's an exciting time, I think, for a lot of players that haven't made their names in Overwatch League before and players like rocket like yeah probably should that motherfucker probably should have been in overwatch league but you know never ended up happening so what now there's a new opportunity to kind of try that and was it isn't going... he like well, let me see how old he is i think he like was only maybe, maybe old enough old enough for the enough, last actually, season yeah. with how point. he's playing now it seems like maybe yeah, probably oh, there's so many him. young players uh rocket he is 18 years old uh yeah so so maybe he could have played like the second half of last year yeah so yeah, probably there's not 19 then, in like 12 like, weeks if there was a year in another year in the Overwatch League, you know, like this guy would be in it. Oh, yeah, oh, sure. will be in it. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And it would have made the bottom end teams a little fucking better, you know what I'm saying? Like, holy shit, not go zero in fucking 50 billion games, bro. Like, <laughs> and we wouldn't have <laughs> that's, fucking... that's aggressive, bro. Can I, ju- can I just say real, as well, but... can I just make a point? Like, this is completely off fucking tangent, too. Please. Why please. the fuck did I get Vegas Eternal games every single <laughs> fucking <laughs> I week? Do so mad. He's not getting he's, dro- he's dropping the Overwatch League juice nine no, months later. No, actually, no. actually, no. Math- Matt Matthew Morello, Matthew Morello, no, just being serious, Give being serious. Give them to me, bro. I'm desperate. It wasn't um it wasn't planned or anything like that. It just kinda happened that way. It wasn't like, oh, you That's guys are only you. gonna get Vegas Eternal. <laughs> I mean maybe. But I was like, dude, they got I'm it like, on my contract. I'm a bro. Vegas Eternal special cast. Yeah, I'm like, you I know, look at my contract, I'm like, bro, uh, bro why the fuck's that shit in there? But you know, twenty twenty one, twenty twenty one, I counted this. Seth and I had the most LA Valiant games in twenty twenty one. That was yeah, that like, was the silver the three Milan run yes. year of twenty twenty one Valiant. We, we casted like 60 to 70 percent of la valley games that year was <laughs> yeah. fucking brutal Absolutely i mean it, brutal. Some, it just happens that way sometimes but yeah i just thought i'd get that out there like what the fuck why the fuck am i casting the team that goes like zero and fucking 40 bro like come on man at least with shango dragons hey, hey, win you eventually. know what last year the valiant guys they were hustling knife was knife was fun to watch even when they got stomped knife no I dude that fan. team was, okay yeah when when knife got on the roster that shit was fun as fuck. all right like, now give me a vegas eternal game now you're calling back eh? <laughs> 
the last like two fucking matches we got, bro. Like, come on, the start of the season oh, was yeah, tragic, fair, fair, fair. tragic. Dude, you start to believe that Vegas. Game, you start to believe that Vegas maybe can win. You're like, holy shit, maybe it's With happening. Now, I was like, then, yeah, then then so, yeah. As soon as a team like that makes substitutions, you're like, wait a second, this could be it. And you want to be that guy, right? Five, you're like, some knife out. No, you want, oh, yeah, exactly. please don't, don't take. You're, you're like the Seth and Wolf when the Shanghai Dragons get their first win. You're like, I could be them, you know, I could be them. I could be the guy that calls the fucking first win for this team it's it's sick i don't know what the fuck we we're talking about before sorry johnny uh na yeah no, rocket was no worries rocket rocket for, making the desk for nine years and covered literally every shit game so don't don't worry about it that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's i don't, I don't get to choose I, I, I got a call time at 7 a.m and i get out at 7 p.m so you know it, it, it is what it is i get to, i get to do all of them it's, it's great. video games is the fucking hardest job in the world we should so we true should hey, wait, he's oh, so facts. true oh jake <laughs> fucking boomed me he got them he's with the back. you're working in video games line oh i did i fucking looked at that's a bad person because Everyone, yeah, to, the, to everyone who's currently, you know, in their car on the way to school or the, the, their job or whatever, I'm it's sorry. It's so hard. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, it was a coin flip schedule. Like, you know, it was random. I shouldn't really complain, but, you know, it was kind of funny. Oh, casting Vegas eternal games. Play. So hard. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we're here for the spice. We're here for the content. Oh, shit. I forgot about what, what I was supposed to be, uh, talk about with the Toronto Defiant. We're talking anyway, about it, Toronto it, being great and uh, Rocket being yeah. really good too. It, but, it, yeah. it, it also was great to see them, you know, uh, that they were another team you gotta give them the credit they were another team who made uh, uh adaptations um sugar free stopped playing uh, echo as much um and instead they play a lot more sugar free tracer with merit sojourn um but you know i i don't know if it's unfair but toronto defiant you know they have the most support in the system and so uh, i don't know if there's there is a little bit of like hey you know you expect toronto defiant to to, to show greatness and be able to do all this stuff right um anyway why were I going to this? I have no idea where I was going. Um, I guess we can just move on to Timeless then. So, mm. Timeless beats out M80. Great showing from Timeless. Really impressed. Love that team. I mean, the swag of Riker coming into the, the, the interview and just being an awesome, confident guy. Then going on Twitter, just like, yep, yeah, M80 was the easy matchup. Now looking forward to the Toronto Defiant. I mean, th this team is hungry. You know, they got a hunger to them. You can see it in on Twitter, in the personas, the way they play the game. Rocket, Sojun, Chopper, um, all, all popping off. Opener being an absolute madman, just wall riding into team fights like he's not scared of life. Um, it, it, it was an awesome showing from Timeless, and you know they take down M80. So uh, another team would just have to give Timeless their flowers. Really, uh, it was so great to see these guys uh, come together and beat other team like M80. I feel like CJ was huge too on the carry. I noticed a lot of like openers from him, a lot of like powerful fighting from him on the carry, particularly in in a role that I, I don't think you necessarily need to, but it often is that little bit of difference. You know, that one kunai at the right moment opening up the map for your tracer, right? Like pressuring the sojourn off the angle or, or sometimes like committing and hard with the dives. I feel like CJ just looked great and very, I didn't see like any notable mistakes from him. And honestly, on support, it's a little bit the unsung hero because basically people see your mistakes. And if you don't make any mistakes, people might not see you, but that's like, look great from, um, from him in the series. I think also opener with those boop ups on Lep on Midtown two times, I think delaying the beat. Yeah. That and, was cool and killing fuck. Hydron with that. So basically yeah. they got styled on in the Lucio department. So the supports, I feel like on Timeless, I mean, we the, obviously the DPS is a very DPS heavy meta with Tracer Sojourn. They're getting a ton of support and it's going to be flashy for them. But I feel like the supports in like these, like they're not the obvious every single fight delivering frags type roles, but, but just in those big ultimate cycle moments, CJ and Opener were way stronger. Yeah, I, I, this team was like slowly creeping up on, on my radar because like I didn't see that much of Wisp before. I think, you know, previous to that, we had Wisp in the Pro-Am. They did fine, but, like, they weren't stand out. So I wasn't sure where to put this. They got roster. 30 in flash-ups, which was not um, good, I guess. After, and honestly, after the old M80 and threw. after, um, yeah, whatever the top team was. They, they, like, should have won. They were up by, like, 100 meters on push with map yeah. point, and they couldn't close. Like, they fucked up majorly to lose that series. They lost but, a 90-plus percent win map. Yeah. So I think, like, you know, they... Coming into OWCS for 2024, when I was like kind of looking at the teams, pro people probably didn't have Timeless like extremely hard. They probably said Timeless was going to be one of the better teams, but not like second in NA kind of good, right? Um, I got a little bit of insight when I talked to like Spectra and he was saying like, dude, this opener team on Timeless is actually looking insane right now in scrims in particular. So Timeless kind of like, you know, they, they come through as real underdogs, super hungry, like you said. 
you listen to the interview afterwards with Chopper, and they, he sounded like he had a chip on the shoulder. The whole team probably had a chip on the shoulder. There's something real big to prove in terms of proving that, like, okay, the first time we beat M80 wasn't a fluke. We're actually better than them. We can beat them twice in a row. You know, we want to be able to prove that we can beat these guys that play the Overwatch League, the big names of the Overwatch League. I mean, that was an amazing interview, to be honest. Like, a lot of insight in terms of the um, mentality of where the attitude of the team currently is. They probably maybe respected Toronto a little bit too much in terms of the fact that, you know, you could see the drive and the hunger versus M80, the teabagging coming on in, yeah, the sick. shit talking versus Hydron, the, you know, you wanting to beat these guys. Though. Yeah, um, so that, that is also true. But, like, you know, it, it, I think they definitely respected the fuck out of Toronto, which maybe hurt them a little bit, but Toronto also just a better team. But time was impressed and definitely the backliners. I was actually going to bring up the, the opener lap stuff, so I'm sure we'll talk about what happened to the M80 support line partway through because there are some questions there, but opener definitely outplayed M80. Definitely the Lucio department. I think opener CJ were an unsung hero. I'm still trying to figure out the IC Riker situation at the moment, but I didn't see these <laughs> plays before, and um, yeah, they looked really good too. Generally speaking, my take is that IC is like probably the preference for flex tank, and Riker is probably the preference for quote main tank. But since they both have a lot of overlap on the role, they aren't like obviously predictable where it's like, oh, they will be obviously playing this comp with this guy in and you can counter comp me. They can both play the other heroes. It's just like their their skill distributions are slightly more favored on certain heroes. So it reflects a desire to play the rest of But this is I like how you more use Sigma, stuff like that. Exactly. This is like how you use two tanks in Overwatch 2, I think. If you have a tank who's like, I am just a locking it the fuck in on main tank. And if we have to play Sigma, I'm just going to like be bad. Um, then you have a huge problem because the enemy team will like lock in bastion even though it's not good and they're like yeah try playing sigma idiot you can't handle it and then you lose like you get fucked by that basically so it's better to have someone on your team but it's very hard to be someone and a slightly less good but but much more achievable is having two very flexible overwatch two tank players too many someone's yeah, exactly. You've got the two mini summons. You've got the off tank specialist someone and the main tank specialist someone. I would argue someone is like a main tank specialist, but he's just so individually good. He like is still pretty okay at the off tanks. Like he can, when I say pretty okay, I mean compared to off tank specialist players, he can hang. Other than maybe the very, very best off tanks might like gap him in like a pure Sigma mirror or something like that. Um, Jake, can I can I go off topic real quick? Can I go, go off topic go, here, go. Jake? I love, I hate Co coach, coach, Coach Jake. Get okay, well, I, we, we won't, we won't drag on for too long because we're actually on a time limit. And also it's like 1 a.m. for Solomon or something. So I don't want to oh, ruin shit. Solomon's life. But <laughs> I, I, sidebar here, Coach Jake, Coach Jake. Yes. Uh, I know you have your course out the, yes. the, and you, you do coaching. What, what's the link? What's the link? Uh, uh, tiny crazy. URL forward slash OW course. You go to my Twitter. All the way there you go. Twitter. There you go. It's All right, Coach Jake. It's linked just right there. Just asking for me personally, okay? Go. Go. I'm not notoriously known as a great Sigma or a Saria player. I would say so. Means. You're not notoriously yeah, known I, as a great I, Sigma. I have enough. I have enough. I don't think I've ever seen you play Sigma in my life, Johnny. Do you want to see my career profile? And that's where the question comes in, Jake. Okay. What's I, the I consider myself that? to be cool? pretty pretty smart when it comes to playing rock paper scissors in rank. Okay. I understand what compositions we need to play to have an advantage. The problem is. I'm not very good at Sorry and Sigma. So, would you recommend me, who is below average, quote, bad on Sigma Saria, to keep picking those heroes if it gives us a compositional advantage? Or should I just play my best heroes? Should I, I prefer the Winston, Ram? I would answer your question Ram? with the question, which is, what is your goal? What what rank do you want to hit? Win. I, 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 want to be, I want to be top 300, Jake. Top 400. Top tank. 300? I'm going to say I recommend continuing. I, I recommend learning those heroes. Cause, okay. All right, so here's the thing. You can force the wrong hero and be better at it, and and you can win a lot of rank games like that. But in the end, you will reach a ceiling where it's too hard. Like you just, no matter how well you play, it doesn't matter. And when you hit the ceiling, you're just fucked because you've never you you've gone all in. You've gone full commit on this playing this one trick. And as soon as you start playing Sigma now, you're in like rank six hundred or something. You're getting absolutely dunked on. So you have no idea what you're doing. It's better to. Commit now to being like, I will learn Sigma and play it when I must. You don't force Sigma, you know what I mean? Like, just play it when you feel like it's really optimal. But if you're playing Winston and the Bastion, you're, I mean, like, I don't think you're fucking learning anything anyway. So you might as well play Sigma, uh, uh, at least when you, when it's, like, really egregious and you need to. I think also most of those heroes, in the end, like, 
Sigma, it's like there's a lot of positioning that goes on Sigma, but in the end, mostly it's an aim hero. You need to just hit your fucking left clicks all the time. Over and I over miss over my again. ult a lot. For some reason, I'm really Ooh. bad with the ult. <laughs> okay, that's a little rough. <laughs> the well, that's whiff, a... <laughs> flux of whiff. Joss has first hand experience with this. Oh, it's he rough. Knows. It's rough. Oh my god. But that's when he funny. hits, right. he hits, bro. I'm you need to give up Sorry, Johnny, it's, it's your timing on pressing the ult. That's why you're missing it. You're pressing it when it's not easy to hit. If it's not easy to hit, you probably fucked up when you pressed it. Yeah, also, I try to, like, hit three people at once. Yeah, and they're exactly. All, they're all on the edge. You only and so need one kill, escaping. Johnny. You only need one kill. And if they're going to yeah. fucking pop a support ult anyway, why do you get all of them? Just get one. Get the one guy. All right. So get the I'll, guy I'll who's keep... in the LOS of your teammates who can get followed up on while he's stunned in the air rather than getting five people behind some fucking wall where they're all going to get healed and they can't die and they're going to get five-man drone and five-man bap heal, whatever. They're not going to die. Coach Jake, get the just get one, one guy who's overextended and actually yeah, get, get the fucking exactly. kill. They still have to beat just for the one guy. They don't have to. They can beat for five guys. They can beat for one guy. It's the same thing. All right. There you go. If, if I'm in your ranked games, I'm going to keep picking Sigma Saria. It's your, your fault. Your problem. Don't. It's not right, me. It's Saria, you. So I don't go. even think it's that good, bro. So you don't have all to All right. Saria. Well, you know, hypothetically, we've got Saria. I'm just asking, you know, philosophical right, right, question. Right. Anyway, thank you, Coach Jakes. Thank you for this little sidebar. Get right your here. RAM up. That's the hero you need to grind the Oh, band. dude. Dude, I play a lot of RAM. But my right, God, it's, it's a boring hero. I am so Oh, come on. RAM. You got to give him the womp womp, bro. You're not no, giving him the womp No, the fucking wand. Like... No, realistically, you gotta press your, like it's press so your thing and do it's this. It's so lame. <laughs> you, you pop Just annihilation this, and you're like, oh, I, I, I block and I stand. And if they run away, it sucks. Like, it's it's, too, it's such a boring ultimate. Yeah, press it I, when they don't want to run away, bro. I'm not rampant at all. Like, I, I play ram a lot because I think it's a good compositional matchup, generally speaking. But it my god, it's a boring hero. Like it's so around. lame. It's so boring. Oh, th you're this lame, was a fun little bit right this here. This is the best cold open ever made. This, this is content. This is Shout out to... Assistant Eric. producer Eric for the idea. Um, and obviously the entire production staff for executing. And then a shout out, shout out to Danny and Jake. Shout out to you drawing the Fibonacci line. Yeah. yeah like that. that was getting trippy. <laughs> the Fibonacci circle. <laughs> I actually did that last year for that stupid Sombras this spot. Whatever. Oh, I remember that now. Oh, oh my, my God. God. That's funny. Yeah. It cracks me up. Danny and Jake are such good actors. <laughs> We have to break the cycle. <laughs> if you can hear me, no more. <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, where are we going next? M80. Let's chat about M80 a little bit. And I'm going I'm to start off with the most kind of controversial M80 topic. Uh, and, 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 and we'll see where we go with this. We I don't want to become the podcast that just like references Reddit all the time because that's lame and we, that we is just that? It, uh, yeah it's, it's just lame all right oh, okay. I know I know w one of the crew members on this podcast spends an inordinate amount of time on Overwatch TMC and uh, the, the competitive Overwatch Reddit I'm Wait. looking out to you but don't do that but anyway the, the question here is um so so like are, are people way too fucking harsh on Hydron I, he didn't he have so. the best tournament, but I feel like he's another candidate for like people don't like Hydron for some reason. If he trash talked your favorite team, fucking deal with it, all right? Bro, he's no need to be one rude, of the most but like, fun players in the scene. Like, yeah, he he's one of the most the fun heat. players in the scene. He's like, why are we all going bored like, with the with the Hydron hate? You know, I don't think he deserves I it. I agree. I like Hydron. I like Hydron. I think he had a fine series. I think, I mean, like he had some rough deaths, but for me, a lot of those were like actually they're getting outplayed. Like the beeps, the on Midtown, he had two deaths where he really should get the beat. Where's the fucking beat? But they, they got maybe they I don't know if the one of them they definitely booped the Lucio. I don't know about the second one or the first one rather. The second one they definitely booped Lucio. But there were some like team play mistakes where I mean, Hydro's getting in there. That's his that's his fucking job. You can't be scared, you know. And he wasn't playing scared to his credit for the whole series. Um and was delivering frags. Yeah, I mean, like I guess you comparing his merit, and it's not looking good, but like I I promise you, I feel like th for me, there's nobody in the world who's looking good next to merit right now. No, you know? I, I it's not even merit. I think I think a lot of people were opened up to um you know, Vision, uh, Seeker, Chopper, Sionjun, you know, it's it's pretty stacked when it comes to hit scan in NA now. Yeah, yeah. I will say I think Chopper got the better of them this series. Uh, what was I was most impressed by with M80 was Pelican, man. I thought Pelican would be having like some of the would be like a weaker performer given that he's playing on something psycho, like 130 ping or something. To NA no, way East. more. Way more. It's like 200 apparently. No, I got, told it was I got told it was Bro actually was dominating the lobby on fucking Tracer. <laughs> he was dominating. Yeah. He was owning. He was hitting pulse after pulse. He wasn't feeding. No, that's what I, I was got, fucking that's, shocked by Pelican. That's the info how I got told. Really? So the, inf the info apparently what? is that Pelican's on 200 and Spectre's on 220. And Jesus. because Pelican is on 200 instead of 220, Pelican's no, going to start. Who's their fucking ISP, bro? That's criminal. 
That's just two crazy. Crazy. That's absurd. It's because you play on they play on like Chicago, I think, for all the WCS games. Oh, okay. So, oh yeah, they don't play so on not West Coast. It's That's not, no more West Coast. So, 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 so the fact that Pelican's doing what he's doing on that is insane. Like when you exactly. watch him play as POV, you don't know he's on that ping. You don't even know he's on high ping. He looks like he's just a normal ping. Which is yeah, the correct? Because I'm seeing him, up, right? I'm seeing him get like 180 sticks, and like he's, he's. I yeah. think he might have even been able to stick other traces. He's doing shit and doing actual combos. Or like, bro, this guy doesn't look like he's opening. He's getting perfect like blink melee recalls in as well. It's like, is it still looks phenomenal, um, despite the disadvantage. So there yeah, is usually, that. Um, usually on tracer, you do get damage with high ping, but you just like feed because like you're like you like thought you recall, but you didn't, you know, or like exactly yeah, you have to recall, I, like, you recall way on your own thought. screen, but but you but you still died in the game, so you just die. So you see the recall animation and then you die. It's like oh fuck, this is so stupid. On the hydron situation, I think like he had the reputation of being like the next best or like the best NA hit scan for mm. a while with the call up into into his teams, and he started on mayhem and went to Toronto, blah blah blah. So like he had a lot of reputation going for him and the general consensus the general narrative is that he never lived up to the reputation because he'd always played on teams that ended up losing whether it was his fault or not so i think there's a little bit of conflating the team's losses to his own personal losses um and i don't know if hydron ever did that much shit talking i don't think he did a huge amount of shit talking if at all but i think the community generally oh. <laughs> dislikes any level of like player banter so you know you we all saw what we happened when gator over that I, I know, but the community just can't. The community cannot get over play ban for some reason, so we want they're not about it. Nice and friendly. They do. No. They want everyone to be super nice and friendly. It's <laughs> they want to run with, with Hydron. Okay. I mean, Hydron talks smack, but it's it was never been like I don't know. It's Someone never been bring like up a personal. Halo montage real quick. I feel like the he's trash just, like, talk montage from MLG two thousand and eight. Someone bring that up. The just bring up like, just bring need... up Mammoth Rex yelling across the we... stage and call. That's all you need. Oh yeah. You also <laughs> bring up the clip of Matt just taking the piss of me live on broadcast. Yeah, thanks that Matt, but. He... Hey, good buddy. I love that. Yeah, it's called yeah. Cast Attack. Hey, too. Matt bullies Jack. You guys should hate Matt too. <laughs> exactly. No way. No that way, was Matt. actually a Reddit post. That was actually a Reddit post this Wait, morning. Wait, really? I think, yeah. I think yeah, Jack Matt hates me. Bullied yeah, by Matt. He does. He does. It is confirmed. It is confirmed. It plot chat live here on the look, podcast. Jack's saying it's true, bro. It's fucking real. It's fucking true. It's fucking true. But no, seriously, like, um, uh, trash talking and like, Teabag, I think everybody's gotten over the teabag thing. Is that true? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. So. I know some people are like, do whatever. Dude, bro. There are some people that are like in ranks going like, oh, we shouldn't teabag people like at BM. You should get reported for that. I'm like, fuck you. I'm gonna fucking yeah, back the fuck where out of you. Where are the bodies? I'll make sure they don't get teabagged. Do you cover watch me? Them. Every single Let person, where I'm fucking in there, bro. I'm like, I'm triple <laughs> blinking his tracer. If I clipped him, I'm fucking bagging him. Hitting this the guy's record. feeding on Ana. He's like, sorry, I died, guys. I had to get the bag on this. Yeah, I had to get the bag. It's like a community, like. I think we need to kind of, you know, especially in the highest levels of competition, trash talking should be should be cool. Should be like cool with everybody because it creates content. It actually shows the personality of the players too. And Hydron is a funny motherfucker as well. Like a funny motherfucker. Yeah. And like being able to um, show that in game and like not having comms and just kind of like bagging people and like then going into interviews talking shit and like the sugar free clip talking shit about Hydron, like all those small things like that's what builds a scene from the grassroots as well like that's not like a manufactured thing that's just kind of these players they are friends with each other they will fucking talk smack against each other and like oh look that's a personality of a player what have we not had in overwatch league for well i guess the latter half of the overwatch league we've had a lot more player like especially with comms check and shit like that we've had a lot more player personalities come out but especially at the beginning there wasn't really any of that stuff like, Korean esports has done it for a long time with the trash talk videos, even though so a lot of them are like, you know, they get the lines to They're say. They're very friendly they trash talking. Yeah, it's very friendly style, but it, <laughs> it's still there and it still exists and it still, like, bolsters the scene and, like, these players have personalities. They're not just, like, the tracer, a, a JPEG of tracer on a screen, you know? It's not just that. Like, they are faces, they are humans, they are... Um, they're just like us, you know? They're just like us. We're the real ones. And I, I, think, think, I think at the end of the day, you just gotta let it go. Like... I think part the, of it is people when you're put so stressed and you're so in there. Players. Yeah, like exactly. When you're so stressed and you're fucking in that moment, you fucking you hit the sickest shot of your fucking life. You know, you want to like get up and be like, "Yo, fuck you!" Like, yeah, I fucking shit on these kids. You know, like that's just <laughs> that's just how shit works. I know Jake loves to fucking do that. Yeah, yeah. like mean, everybody I mean, should love to do that. It's, 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 I think part of the problem for the community is like I understand because like there's no way for the people to really have a real perspective on this, right? Where as a player sure. trash talking and like trash talking with other players. You're like, 
yeah, we're going to fucking beat these guys. You suck, bro. You can't touch me. Whatever. Yeah. You're, like, getting in each other's head and, like, you're talking smack with each other and like they can talk smack right back to you and you're like it's like a human to human interaction the problem is when a player participates in this and engages in a human to human interaction talking truck and trash i understand it'd be like i mean there'd be a line right if you said something that's like really fucked up or like super personal to somebody yeah they'd be like yeah that's that's not cool bro like you can't just you know attack somebody for like personal characteristics or whatever but they're like yeah i'm better than you at the game you suck bro like that's it's it's very contained to this like thing that we're doing which is competitive gaming but then i think when, what goes beyond it is when even though it's still competitive gaming it's like yeah like hydron can talk trash on let's say hydron secret let's just take two big names in the screen i don't think they actually have, there's no beef i don't think they ever talk trash to each other whatever let's imagine they did and they're talking trash to each other and then me i'm a i'm a i'm 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 you know fred the fan and i'm like <laughs> i love seeker I, I hate you hydron and then me <laughs> and 20 other fred the fans all tweet at hydron hey hydron you're a fucking asshole that's where people don't realize like you feel like you're doing the same thing hydron is but hydron is talking to one person and you are a crowd of people who are anonymous on the internet who are all talking to one person that's actually different that's that's qualitatively different in terms of what it what it is to do and so you feel as an individual well i'm not doing anything i mean he talked trash on him why like why can't i talk trash on him you know and it's like i think you can but i think it's very easy for fans to let that to, to, to kind of put themselves in the shoes of the players and it's also part of in fairness to fans it's part of the conceit of the entertainment is that you do want to feel like i care about these players and these teams this is my team you know what i mean like and it's, so it's it's part of the passion and part of the excitement for fans to get engaged and to really be part of that i think it's just dangerous because sometimes it can get to the point where now you have tens or hundreds of people on on the via the internet talking trash on somebody and then it's like it's actually a different thing i think if you had like like imagine can you imagine if like all six players on a team were all like in every interview was like hey by the way this one player is fucking <laughs> shit at the game it would be like after a while you'd be like whoa hey guys like like that's a little weird like you're getting a little weird with it you know but when it's like a couple of players talking trash and no one's getting ganged up on you know yeah i think when people do get ganged up on that's when it actually is kind of fucked up you know like it gets way worse exponentially the, the bigger it gets the more people are involved in it whereas one to one it's not that big of a deal when it's 10 to one or 100 to one or on the internet a thousand ten thousand to one that's where it becomes like really crazy and, and like can fuck with people um and as a player you have to like it, you know it, it isn't it's not a two-way street like right. it can't be a two-way street between me and 10 million people on the internet there's no two-way street between the two of us like as i can't comprehend street. ten thousand people you know i can't comprehend right. that and so i can't engage with with that many people and speaking on your like contain point as well, like it's a 1v1, not a 1v1 in the server, but like DPS mm. versus DPS in the server. And they also know each other. They're at the top of the like competitive Overwatch in North America, let's say. Like we'll do the Secret and Hydron thing again. They know each other. Uh, pr maybe they're not best friends. They're not like super close or anything like that. But they've been seeing each other in the rank ladder forever. Like they've been competing against each other forever. Maybe they even teamed together once, you know, like... They know each other. They know it's not anything like personal attacky. And if it is, like, you know, there's probably something to say there. And it would probably be pretty obvious if it was a very much a personal attack. But if it's someone going, you're bad, like, it's whatever. Like, you know, those two players are going to shrug it off. Also, because they're at the height of competition, they've been hearing that for fucking years. They've been, that shit has been fucking flying in ranked and like Solar and whatever. Like, that shit's been. Dude, since the dawn of like competitive gaming, that shit's been going on. You know, I think Overwatch and uh, as an esport, I think it was a lot of people's first esport, um, and I think that's potentially why maybe some people aren't used to it. Um, but other esports and other games, especially now and especially back then, old Halo, old COD. In <laughs> yeah. the Halo, if you've ever seen the like pretty the, real. the MLG like LAN halls before, like old like 2008 Meadowlands, for example, like go look that shit up on YouTube for Halo Three. They're like in like tables and like TVs and Xboxes and shit. And they get up and be like, fuck you. Like, fuck, like get shit on kind of thing. And like it, that probably, you know, back then probably got a little bit too personal. But like when you reach the main stage events. A little bit. <laughs> like, yeah. But when you reach the main stage events, you look at people like Walshy, Say and like T2. And like, oh, what was the really famous one? Gandhi in Halo 2. Gandhi would be like, whoa, what's the matter, Tom? What's the matter, Tom? Like, talking to T2. Like, yo, you can't, you can't fucking shoot me. You can't fucking hit me. Like, you know, that 
maybe a little bit to the extreme, but it's been going on for so long that I feel like between I think it players, be a little bit it's, more it's like part of the game. And then it when is, fans feel like that they want to get in on it too, right? It becomes weird because it's like you're not the same. You're not in the same position as a fan, honestly. Oh, this is the video. <laughs> oh, complaint. Oh, this Matt. It's Matt. Look at Matt yeah, in the yeah. back, bro. Where is that? Matt, yeah, 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 he's yeah. like, hell yeah, talk your shit. Talk your shit. I'm Matt, the parents of Black Jack. He's yelling at the other team. On. He's yeah. yelling at the other team. There's, there's you as coach team Matt. Only. Believe yeah, the the insight, the, the 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 Get the boys like, psyched. Like, like this is part of the game, you know. But if you think you, in the end, as a fan, you're not part of this. That, or, or like, you you can be, you can enjoy it, and you can celebrate <laughs> it. Can, you, can you imagine in social media the day after this in Overwatch? Oh my god! No, oh like, god. like I want this in Overwatch, man. Like, yeah. th like yeah. as long as it doesn't. I mean, all right. I don't want it to get to the point where people like genuinely are like hating each other. But I kind of do want it to be a point where some other guy's like, you know, fuck this guy. I need to fucking beat Dude, this guy. Dude, that's and how then, in matters. 2016 when I played, like, we had a rivalry with Creation Esports. We, we like, we quote unquote fake hated those guys. Like, we just wanted yeah, to beat yeah. their ass. Like, we just wanted to beat them every single time. We we didn't like them at all. Like, that was just fucking, that was the scene. Like, we were mm -hmm. we were rogue. We thought all the teams were shit. We're like, fuck Envy. Everyone loves Envy. We, like, want to beat Envy all the time because everyone just dick rides them all the time. And we're the better team. And that's what we're gonna do so like that's just a scene like that's just that was my so, mindset about our mind as a, a pro team player, anyway. that's that's honestly how you have to be you know it's motivation to like fucking grind and like beat mm -hmm. them yeah fake beef versus creation real beef versus envy <laughs> well, I mean, right, well, no, I mean, there was no, there was never any hate. I mean, it's not shit, we like personal. share facilities and like hotels and, you know, when we travel, yeah. like we, we'd go out for drinks, like, you know, we go out for drinks and, you know, cause we we were hanging out in Korea. Like it was just, we're, we're friends, but we're like, then we're You're practicing friendlies. and like, oh, fuck well, those guys. Like we're going to the beat them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. As soon as you get the server, it's different. I do want that as well, Jake. Like thinking about the World mm -hmm. Cup stage, you know, where like they face each other. Dude, I wanted some motherfucker just to get up and be like, I want to see somebody get standing shit up. up. Yeah, I want to like, see somebody standing up. Exactly. It's like, I want to see that shit. It's funny as fuck. Cause, cause and for the players, for the it, it signals how, how it, much this means to them that yeah. they'll do whatever it takes. Like even getting themselves psyched up, talking smack in the enemy team. Like for me, that just is all about like, you're so invested in this. This is like everything to you. And you're willing to like get crazy exactly. in the moment. It's like, it like builds the intensity and, and shows the passion of the players. Yeah. I think just that the problem is that you know if you have and if you have social skills you also know that if the other team does this to you that like you can you even it's like it could like drive you you can get mad at them be like fuck this guy talking trash on me like i'll fucking show him you know what i mean but you're not gonna like hit him you're gonna like shoot him in the game like you're playing a game where you shoot each other so it, it kind of makes it That's fun to like frustration to man. like make it more emotionally intense and to like get a little angry you know and like lock in like that that can make it more fun but I think the, the the big differential is just is just that is a, a that is something that people do, you know. Like if you look at like any like watch any traditional sport, I mean, people get in like fist fights and shit, and like like watch hockey, bro. People like really <laughs> beat each other up. That's like part of the sport. I don't I don't want that. But to be clear, there's something in human our human nature when we're doing this like really competitive stuff, and it's literally your life on the line. Not your life, but it's your 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 livelihood on the line. Like this is our job. Like if we lose. You will lose your job eventually, like theoretically. If you lose too much, you lose your job. You win a lot, you get more money, it, you, yeah. or you keep the job for longer. In the end, you're playing for something that really matters to you. And on for life players, winning really matters to us. Like you put your whole life in the game. In the end, you really, really want to win. And that passion gets sometimes it sometimes could get angry. It could get intense. And I think people just maybe at fans they don't see that and they're like, well, for me, I'm just watching for fun. And why doesn't everyone just have fun like I do? It's like you're not a pro player if you think it's just fun to play and it's like, oh, I just am so happy to be also, here. It's like, no, you want to fucking win. I, I, I think all players to some degree have an ego and you need to have an ego or you can't be competitive. Like if you don't yeah. truly believe you're better than the other guy and you can shit on them, then I don't think you can be at the top of your game. So it is like, it's a prerequisite to be a good player. You need to have an ego. So like, I don't think anybody should be surprised that pros are going to have egos. Some pros are just better at hiding it than the others, but everyone needs to have one to be good. Yeah, it's I think opinion. it's a prerequisite. In, well, I, say in, I like that. I, I think it's true. You, you do need an ego. You do need to believe in yourself in that way. You need to believe that you can be the best in the server. Or, or really that, that like your team is the best team or that you guys can win. You, no matter how good the other team is, you have to like believe that there's, there's a possibility. I think different people, it looks different for different people. 
And so for some people, they're like more quiet about it. They don't need to talk about it. Is they don't care about talking trash because it doesn't motivate them. It doesn't get them psyched up. That's, like, that's what I'm talking about, that's baby. Look at this guy. It's getting me amped up. <laughs> it's like, yo, chill, dog, chill. It's all good. Like, it's <laughs> scary when Johnny does it because he's in. too big. Johnny's too tall. Johnny scary. Pause, too tall. Pause, when I, pause when I stand up. Pause when I stand pause up. Pause with his so chest. Fill it up the... Let's go. Let's go. Oh, look at that. Let's fucking go. Fuck who else that, stood up? Who was the other guy? Be belt unbuckled, ready to go in. That's what, that's what I was talking about. To, he's ready to throw, <laughs> throw hands, baby. Let's go. Dude, Who's this? Dude, Who's those this? takeover events, the takeover events in Germany were crazy because you'd, you'd be like opposite each other with like a glass thing. And so yeah. when you'd pop off and just like shout and you could hear each other. It was, it was crazy. Those venues are sick. Like the take sofa. We did uh, Atlantic show down there. And it's so sick. Like, loud. He's like, glass. cringe, bro. Chill, yeah. chill, yeah, chill. They, they, thought, <laughs> they thought I was way too much. They thought no, I did way dude, too much. Not, no, see, I was up. the same way with my team. Like, I would, like, get up, get super psyched, or, like, cheer really hard when you win stuff. I don't know. Like, I guess it just depends on the team. But I always feel like that helps help me play better. I feel like it was, like, yeah, there, you have to learn. You learn there's, like, a limit. If you get too overhyped, then you, like, overheat and you start playing bad. But, like, yeah. some of the hype helps. It's, like, there's a strategy to it, or there's, like, a level that is, like, the best. If you can get the other team to be, like, all quiet and they're not saying shit, you know you fucking won. You know you know you fucking won. These guys are scared of us now. We're gonna, we're just gonna run this, we're gonna run the whole, whole game on them because they're, they're too scared to fight back, you know? All right. Oh, I, also, I don't hate Matt. Matt doesn't hate me. That's my final <laughs> comment on that. Like, <laughs> no, guys, we're just joking. <laughs> I was joking about him, like, <laughs> interesting caster oh interaction. God. I was joking about him giving me all the Vegas games. Like, bro, that's God, play the video. Yo, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna comment right now. Audio. I'm gonna comment right now. Let's get some juice. All I right. want to hear this clip. Hit, the video the clip. audio. Is I saw the clip. Of... It was so good. We, we, we can't hear it. it. We can't hear it. We have to be in the Discord. And we're not when we're recording this, oh, so we, we we can't hear it. It's it's funny as fuck. I think we got a lot of banter this week. So Avril coming in hot right off the bat. Yeah, like, oh, Avril commented. All right, yeah, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. Wait, wait so a second. True. That guy's spitting though. Sounds Admiral, like you sounds like you secretly hate all your co-casters. Yeah. Um, upvoted. It's that's getting upvoted, Avril. Juice. You gotta have to reply now. Otherwise, people I'm, gonna, are gonna I'm gonna vote it too. I'm Say go I do, right bro. Now. Fuck everybody. Like you gotta just burn these bridges. <laughs> uh, I always anyway. wonder what what people would believe on Reddit if we were just willing to spread devious misinformation. Me when like, I do we all work together, man? It's, it's not that bad. Like, me when I instigate fun. drama. Uh, yeah, me when I instigate drama. Yeah. But we anyway. gotta be like Twitter. It's like, it's like just for the clicks, baby. For the enga engagement baiting. Engagement yeah, baiting. Man. Engagement baiting. Uh, I think for the rest of the episode, let's uh, let's let's quickly hit on M80 as a team because we've just talked about the Hydron stuff, and I don't want to leave M80 without talking about you know some of their team performance overall. Um, you know, Hawk obviously try to flex as much as possible in their match against Toronto overall top three. Can't be too disappointed with that. Gator tweeted out the coach. He was like, hey, we put this team together right before the start of OWCS. We had like less pride this time. Uh, we didn't get to, you know, polish things out. They seem pretty happy with the result overall, especially because of ping, right? Um, Renko, as of recording right now, just announced looking for a team. Renko oh, also got some shit. play time okay. in uh, the last couple of maps. So uh, you were talking about the backline there, Avril. But let, talk a little bit about MAD's result as a team here getting top three. Yeah, I mean, they expected top two. I think they were all very disappointed. Um, I'm, I messaged Hawk afterwards, and, you know, it, yeah, they. I think the whole thing, I talked to Gator afterwards as well on the stream, and they definitely expected that a team of their caliber, with their backing as well, M80 is like, I don't know if M80 is like a giant org, but it's definitely not that, not some, it's not some, like, pissing contest, but they're a bigger org than Timers, right? So, you know, uh, this team should be better funded. They're bigger names. They should have performed better than Timeless by pure reputation. They believe they should have performed better than Timeless. And so that, um, that loss, and it's like two losses, right? They beat, they lost to the Timeless twice, which probably also hurts. And it's the opposite of how the Timeless players feel. They get to, they get to affirm that they're better than M80 versus M80. They, they don't get to cope. That's like, oh, well, Timeless just kind of fluked on us. It's like, no, Timeless actually probably are better than us. And that's probably quite a bit of pill to swallow as well. Um, I think they had backline issues. I mean, we watched the game. Um, I don't know what's going on with the, the Renko LFT. And there was a, you can read it as maybe a cryptic tweet from Gator where he says the team will have a different look. And it's like, well, what do you mean by that, bro? Does that mean he said different we players? will be a different team? But that's we a very, a you can exactly, look at that many different ways. Exactly, I don't feel like you can learn lot, anything from there's, that. There's various ways you can interpret that. And there was a joke tweet from Seeker as well. It's like, all right, Nero, you're up next for Lucio. Because they swapped Lucio plays midway through the series. And it didn't make a lot of sense unless either the team wanted to bench lap because of the, um, 
maybe Lep's performance or Lep maybe potentially self-bench because he lost, lost confidence. Like, hard to know exactly what went down. But, um, yeah, after Midtown... I'd be surprised when, if he self-benched. Knowing, knowing after, Lep, I feel after, like he stays confident. Maybe, yeah. Prop, maybe the team bench them. Because after Midtown, with, with the whole, like, opener kind of booping him and the late beats and all that kind of stuff, possibly the team was like, yo, get Rank on, Lucio. We're going to change something. But at that point, you know the team is on ice. Like, they're, this team is now, like, struggling. They're losing yeah. confidence. Hawk swapping all the time. They're playing mystery heroes now. Um, Pelican is trying to drag this team across, but they're just... The team looks like they're in shambles. I don't know what the comms are like. But visually, you look at that, you're thinking, they're falling apart. They have to be falling apart at this stage. That's what it looks like. Yeah, timeless. Like, I, I feel the same way watching. I mean, it's hard to know without being in the comms, but they didn't look... They weren't winning when they do win fights. It wasn't really so much off the team play, especially as the series went on. It was more about okay, like get your ones, guys. But it wasn't, you know, it's it's hard to say. I mean, I think it can also be like a practice gap. But like, yeah, it's a chaotic meta. Maybe they're reading into it, but it's that's a you know, I think it's a kind of a silly excuse because in the end, yeah, these players have played a ton of metas. They they should know all these different metas. They should know how to play, how to execute, um, and they've had just as much prep time. Everyone has like the same amount of prep time, you know. So in the end, I I think. M80 definitely gonna have to. I wouldn't be shocked to see some roster changes from M80 from how disappointing this result is. If it was like a super close series where they like barely, barely lost, then maybe, but they kind of got clapped by both of the top two teams. So it was like you said, Avril, it was not like uh, we barely, we barely made it in. Although the cost was strong. I mean, it's weird. I, in the, honestly, in hindsight, I feel like maybe it looks bad benching left. It's like, dude, they like lost Midtown, but I mean, they got full held on Midtown, right? I might remember quickly, but they did hold on remember. defense, um, which is like, I feel like that could happen. You know, a couple of mistakes, like one or two team fights go bad. But I mean, they won this map and it looked pretty good. I think they should have won this this round too. They like C9 actually this round. Why do you why do you think they bench light for Renko? Because that just didn't make sense to me unless there was something going on. I, I mean, honestly, this is something you just, there's literally no way to know this because it just like, who knows? Like maybe like it's like comms issue. I feel like Renko's going to have better comms or or what? Or people losing confidence in I literally have no fucking idea why they, why they bench each other. I mean, it's like, you just, that's like, like the Nagi's player, it's not like Lev's a bad Lucio player, you know. It's just for for some internal reason they it, they it, wanted to make the shift. You know when you see a bench like mid series, like whoa, something's not right here because that's not like yeah, a strategic. Yeah, it looks wrong. That's not it like a strategic. Wrong. Oh, we're gonna play rank code. Yeah, double you definitely didn't this. fucking it's plan it. It's not strategic. It's not a strategic thing they're doing. It's like something went wrong and we got to fix it now, and that was their solution. So you, you that immediately is is like the clear sign that something fucked up badly. I don't, I don't know what. It's hard yeah. to tell what it was. For sure, it's like some kind of boomage or whatever because you, you wouldn't do that normally. Like, you, I mean, it's obvious Renko is not like... You, like, Lep's obviously your main Lucio player on this roster and Renko is like double flex support, right? Like, that's it's pretty clear. That's why you... That's like the thought behind the roster, which is a good thought. And lots of teams have that setup because it makes sense. It's a good setup. But yeah, the, the this was not that. This was not a planned substitution for sure. Um, well, maybe not for sure, but I, I'd be willing to bet. I'd be put some money on it. All right. Uh, do we want to do some uh, OWCS Korea before we wrap up? I, I said I'd take two hours of your time, and we're now two hours, 30 minutes. So, you know, I know people are busy this Monday. We were yapping, and, uh, bro. We, we were yapping, but... About. Well, also, we started a bit late, so... Bro, you know, is, it, is Wacken was... sponsored by T1 wearing the Philly Fusion oh, skins? Yeah, with oh, the Philly Fusion skins. Is that an accident? Oh. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Not. Maybe it's an accident, but that would, be, that would be oh, dope. And, Good pickup. Um, Soul Dynasty, Gen G are looking for a team, right? Gen G are looking for a team. They're doing an academy, yeah. So if, you know, what would be funny as fuck if Wack comes out with Soul Dynasty skins the next time. <laughs> yeah, that would <laughs> and be just funny. Well. Us. I think, um, I think when you look into the tweet from, I'll try and find it so that we can bring it up on stream. But like, um, when you look at Gen G, what they're doing, I'll bring that up first because that is that is something to talk about. I found the tweet here. Is the fact that it specifically says Gen G Academy, um. And I talked to Yesk about this. When you read into that, essentially it looks like Genji, they want to dip their toes into OWCS, but it doesn't look like they're willing to have like a huge commitment. They're not trying to like pick up a big roster. They're not trying to have like a, this massive winning roster. They just want to kind of have a team that exists in OWCS and it's an academy because they're kind of training them. It seems like one of those like game coach style things. Um, I know Jack knows what that is. So yeah, Genji Global yeah, Academy. So it's I, not like, it's not like a camera. big serious real Genji thing. It's just like, we kind of want to be in, but like not. Yeah, fully. so they're not getting whacked, basically. No, I don't think they're getting any. I don't think they're gonna pick up a team. They're they're looking for fresh recruits. They're looking for like young new players. So that's what that's about. Uh, but yeah, OWCS Korea. 
we had the the game we've been all waiting for the whack versus falcons game which is you know basically weeks on end where you look at the the schedule like bro you gotta wait till week four to see this but we finally got them and the the streets talking about whack being better did indeed come true moon and rush both publicly saying that <laughs> the they believe whack was it. <laughs> they were talking and the streets apparently the streets comprise of moon and rush um but they both said that whack was better and now okay maybe moon is like a little bit biased because it's his team but rush also agreed and then you look at the game and they won that shit. like i think it was a let me check the results it was a three and one and very competitive all round esperanza are actually not as competitive as esperanza was a bit of a blowout honestly but the first two uh maps of samoa hollywood are very competitive and the one major takeaway i had from this is surprisingly most people would not have thought this but max and jumbin in my opinion outplayed smurf and harbin by far and that is when you look on paper it's like there's just no way you have smurf and harbin that should be the best tank line in the world i gotta do some vote reviews of that i kind of like how, you don't believe you i gotta see it for myself no because that's, cause that's heard, insane you know what you know what else the streets were saying this isn't necessarily from russia but the streets were also saying the streets that, that jumbin was the best doom in korea and i'm starting to believe it i think jumbin might be jumbin is like a top tier tank in this region um and <laughs> dps wise as well lip was on a heater he was playing some cast he was playing some widow it's like everybody on wag played on a different level there was a ton of brig and anna actually i don't know what it is about korea but um, we, you know, Bro, in AEU, I guess, I'll Ram, you a secret. They're going to keep playing that shit. No matter what. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they love dying, man. <laughs> they don't but... even need the GA. They're just like, all right, we're it's just, just going Guys, fucking... unironically, OWCS is the best chance we have for NA teams to actually beat Korean teams. Because the Koreans, I, they're, they're some, they just love dive, bro. Even if there's some super hyper cancer meta that beats dive, they won't play that shit. They will be like, we can win if we fucking if <laughs> we we'll come, play everything we'll perfect. Like, and then and he's like, and it's like, if, it, if they just change the numbers, sometimes that shit is really good if the numbers are high enough for Moira or whatever. But but Korea really resists. I mean, it works both that. ways. It works both ways because it could actually be dive. And then, yes, yes, yes. But I'm Ram, saying just looks shit. We, we like yeah, coin yeah. flips. We like coin Ex flips <laughs> yeah. for NA fans, guys. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think um, to me, the biggest difference is the tank line, which is absolutely insane. But I mean, everyone's top tier. Every single player in the lobby at all points is, you know, I feel like top I, of the I game. see something in this screenshot that's making me uh, that I don't like, which is I'm seeing I'm seeing proper on Tracer. And that's controversial to be saying that. But why is proper not on the flex hero? Why is he I on think Tracer? I think you need to maybe at the start of the round they probably thought they were gonna swap between a couple of this they I don't know I think the only reason they would do it this way around is if they like plan to swap proper the into tracer something else is never gonna swap in this spot I promise you that's not the reason they both know that they would the other hero might swap but there is no possibility I can't remember what happened. if this you're gonna play dive on Koth that you don't lock tracer the whole round at this level of the game that is like a given 100 percent locked in hero well and probably just put the player who's gonna hard lock it in on that hero and I got why you, is it bro. not proper, stalker proper just says to stalker fuck you i'm playing tracer this time i That's think it. that is the <laughs> reason this might not be great i know jake is incredibly stalker pilled i am stalker pilled as fuck because this guy's a freak on tracer and even if proper is better on both heroes it's just not the right use of your resources no, I, I think mean? I think I I don't know maybe who's the coach again? Um, Krusty. Maybe it's Krusty's Krusty cooking. And Krusty's yeah, cooking. Right, yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to talk to Jungbot. I'll have to ask him. Here's, the other, here's the other thing as well. Like Stalker's they, really good at Echo too, actually. So it's it's a little weird. They but, both cover each other's bases, so I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. But it is. I I, I see what you're talking about. I do see what you're talking I about. I feel like I mean, for me, maybe I'm crazy. I don't actually like. Maybe if you ask Stalker, it'd be like, no, I'm really really confident in Echo. But I feel like for these two players, proper's massive strength is his flexibility that he could play Correct. every fucking hero at an insane level yeah so he shouldn't play tracer because that's the hero who doesn't swamp like you don't put your hyper flex player on tracer that's not the purpose of trace like tracer is for the fucking one trick and then somebody else plays everything that's a really strong setup to have if you can leverage speaking it. of swaps speaking of swaps uh, the other thing that was interesting is like I don't know, maybe Krusty's doing a little bit of cooking here, but there's still a bit of an interesting situation between Harmon and Smurf in terms of who plays what, because they have been consistently, this is across all the Falcons games, consistently, I think they've had about 50-50 playtime, and now it's got nothing to do with circle points when you're trying to, like, maximize both players getting playtime for circle points, because Korea doesn't have circle points. It's just direct qualification. 
Um, so sometimes you legitimately have Harmon swapped in or vice versa, and Harmon's just playing Winston the whole map. And he smurfs on the bench, and Harmon is just on the Han Binston or basically whole map. So Krusty, he's he's doing a little, he's doing a bit of cooking. It does look a little bit of a uh, looking looking a little Max Jumbin twenty twenty three no, with Max no. Max playing Winston and Jumbin on Diva kind of style. I'm no. not saying it's bad because like maybe Harmon's like maybe he's doing all right, but you don't know internally. But I just look at it on the surface. Maybe it's because I'm so stalker pilled, and I don't know. I think stalker <laughs> is a flanker, so you can, you can play it's Echo worth bringing up. You know, but if we I can instigate like, some drama Proper's about something. To be the <laughs> Is it proper? I mean, like, this is like, I literally don't know. Like, I'm friends with Drunk Buck, but I have not talked to him about this subject. Yeah. I have zero. I am like a Redditor for this shit. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'm just making um, you admit it. But I, I just think Redditor. it's weird. There I think it it's weird. If I, if it was just, if it was me and I, and I have no inside information. So maybe if, coach I, if I was inside the team, maybe I would have more information that would lead me to make the same decision. So I'm not saying they're wrong, but I just find it interesting. I'm like, if it was me, I would say, all right, stalkers are locked in tracer and proper. You play every other goddamn hero. Like, that's how we do it. Yeah. And, and I don't know. Yep. They usually what? do that. That was the I think that was the one time they swapped position between okay, Prop and Stalker. Okay. But they Sorry, usually do. They usually play Stalker Tracer, correct? Because I thought this was like finally we got a player who, who and also will like by the play way Tracer for proper. You know what I mean? Also by the like, way, like... proper play proper played Cass in in the series some point, and he was yeah. fucking insane on Cass as well. Yeah, he's a freak on you hit scan, bro. I want see, him to play hit scan. You don't see a lot of proper hit scan because his pool is normally projectile. I, I, he, he can play the hit scan, but you don't. You, it's rare because he normally has like a dedicated hit scan on the team, and this is the one team he's played in a long time where he doesn't have that. So he's done hit scan. I guess last year there was the he sang. But I feel like last year they made he sang play tracer. <laughs> well, last year was sombra tracer, and both of them just don't want to play sombra. So that's that's. <laughs> All right, that I can understand. I understand not putting on sombra, <laughs> but. In the end, I feel like he has to bite the bullet and play Sombra. In, he in actually did. I think last week there was like Malga Sombra for a little bit. Uh, Proper was on Sombra. He was he was actually farming. I'm not gonna lie, dude. It's not like this guy can't play Sombra. I just refuse to accept that Proper can't fucking figure out how to play Sombra. It's like no, he's so he's the best player in the world on every goddamn hero in the game except Sombra. I can't handle that one. Like, come on now, the guy can play Sombra. <laughs> Okay, uh, Wack ended up beating Falcons 3-1, uh, and we got an exciting week ahead, because even though NANU, there's no uh, OWCS NANU going on, there is a big weekend of OWCS Korea coming up. Wow, that is a mouthful, I'm, I'm now realizing OWCS two months in. Korea. OWCS Korea. Uh, we got the last chance qualifier taking place, there's four teams who are battling in a bracket for two spots um, in the playoffs. And we also have seeding decider matches where uh, the four best teams will be competing for seeding as well. So um, I don't really care about the seeding decider matches, quite frankly, because they just play for seeding. But when it comes to the last chance qualifier, Avril, who who's not making it? Is this is this the end of Genesis, Genesis before they yeah, explode? They Poker face, run away, make it. Genesis have been the most disappointing team in Korea so far. I got baited by Rush into thinking this team was top three. And uh, so, you know, sometimes streets do be wrong. And uh, <laughs> streets are never uh, wrong, bro. They never lie. Uh, poker face have been surprisingly good. Runaway, they were very good at the start. And I think they fell off a bit. And Yeti have now overtaken them as like top four. So Yeti is a, that's Dong Ak's new team, by the way. Yeti is the Viper, Dong Ak, knife team. Viper and knife together on the same team. Oh, absolute fucking magic. Yeah, Viper, that's good. Still looking like one of the best tracers. They're cooking. In the entire region, maybe the world right now. He is nutty on the here, doesn't miss a pulse bomb. Um, so LCQ is going to be very interesting. The, Asia in general is a bit of a weird format. Not to like, not to yap about the format too much, but there is a bit of cope on the Falcons whack game, and that it didn't mean anything because it was purely for seeding. And now they're about to play another match this week, purely for seeding again. So Wait a minute, back hold on. I have Falcons more cope for you. For I have more cope for you. Go, go. More cope for Falcons fans and for me because I'm a Falcons. I'm a believer. I called them as the best. So I feel like, I don't know. I'm just watching it. Like there's not that many mirror matches in this series. I'll be more worried when they lose a mirror. But this is like every, like very few mirrors. I guess they did lose the mirror on, um on, what's this? What is this? This is Esperanza. They lose the mirror in Esperanza. And that's like the only mirror this series. Thanks for reviewing live, real, a, a real, real time, a real yeah. Time which I think is podcast. like, in the end, like, yeah. I feel like this is also Chorong being a goat. Chorong underappreciated goat on the main support. Um, compared, to everyone thinks like Chio Fielder are like the best in the world, untouchable. But like, bro, Shu is Shu, and I think Chorong is like actually very underrated on main support. Like how how elite he is, 
Um, but yeah, they probably should still win this. But then they get like, there's so many comps. I'm like, well, do you really want to play Hanbin on Saravasa? Because they like keep going Winston into your Zarya. Is that okay? Like historically, Winston is a Zarya counter. And then they go Queen, but then instantly Jumbin's on Doom. He like won't give any good matchups. I feel like maybe Hanbin's like sticking a little too much to his like preference heroes, but that's why they put him in is they believe they can win. So basically, my cope is that this is like relatively early in a new meta. Things aren't all that stable in terms of the pick and the matchup. And that's not usually how it's going to be for the games that really matter in the end of teams of this caliber. Like, it's, I don't think these teams are going to have an issue qualifying to play against each other. In the end, they're going to, um, like, both these, these teams are probably going to be top two, like, no matter what. Like, yeah, no, no one else touched them. them. I, I can and confirm so, that, like, number three is not close enough right now. I, yeah, in so opinion. in the end, they're both going to land, and what's going to actually matter is, like, who wins in the land meta, which is likely going to be a lot more established than the meta they yeah. played on today. I will say, if, so if FTG is not bad, if FTG is not bad, that's, I think, Bernard's Agreed. team. It's like, Agreed. they're, they they're still on the come up, but I, I, I would still put my money the on Wack. The name value is so scary too. from Wack and, and Falcons, yeah. honestly. All right. We'll see. The seeding games, FTG, Wack Falcons, they all play each other, and Yeti and as well. So I also realized they literally only did the Echo Tracer thing for like literally one map in the entire series, one round of Samoa. So I don't think it's that important. Generally, we got, it is um, proper as a hit scan. Thank you. Thank you for the insights on the Korean region. We got we to gotta wrap this episode up because yeah. people got places to go. But we got one final piece of big news. We got leaks on Twitter. We got leaks, leaks from faceit.com in the channel solomon i know you're typing in the same group chat i am but we got to go check out the overwatch channel on discord because it, it's happening just one day in chase previously on exo has been added to ends on face it oh thinking emoji. thinking emoji well hola we were saying they need a dive tank and they got the dive tank <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. We'll we'll reach out to 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 the responsible parties for comment, and uh, we'll return next week with more information on this incredible transfer. Or uh, it's not even a transfer. They they just fucking transfer. took. They yeah, just look, I don't know why. I, I went to like old. full Premier Leagues. Like, oh, fucking NC Sports has agreed on a transfer <laughs> of Chase for nineteen million pounds. <laughs> Dude, I've had to put out with Jake's British oh, accent. That now. British is bro. Good, bro. You should worst. do that every day. You should do that <laughs> every day. That say? sounds yeah. super real, bro. Oh, I live with I live with Josh and Bren for uh, for a couple of years. You know. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> You, you you are I'm so just inciting rude. internal drama rude. between the Europeans Every time from, my, use Swedish from my accents, home bro. across the ocean. This is, oh this is why God. Matt didn't agree to your arrested sumo idea. This is why Matt hates Jack, because he's so British. True. Yeah, that's true, actually. All the Americans hate me. <laughs> I'm only with my EU brethren, only my EU brethren, and that's why I'm sad uh, they've, they've all gone. They've all left me. Mitch wasn't on the broadcast this week, because Matt killed him. <laughs> killed him, slightly <laughs> picking each one of them off. It's fucked up. Um, right. Jake, Americans, I'll uh, reach out to Americans. Manscaped and see if they have any more Irish reads for us. Oh, we can, God. Uh... <laughs> oh. Jeez, that, was a, that was a one time please. thing. Bro. No, that was a one time thing. Okay, <laughs> I, I need an extra fee for that. <laughs> <laughs> extra fee. All right. I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. We're, we're cooking here on Plat Chat. All right. That has been Plat Chat Overwatch episode 219. Um, we obviously had more to talk about, but we didn't really have time for that. So uh, we have a bit of a downtime next week. So we'll chat more about Korea next week. And we'll also chat about um, some of the reports that came out from Bloomberg about, you know, Overwatch 2 development, PVE, stuff like that. I know people are eager to hear our comments on that. You know, we have tons of. Not, not really any insight. But we'll talk about it anyway. And sound like we know what we're talking about. This has been Plat Chat. Wait, Brains Player of the Week. Brains Player of the it. Week. Brains Player of the Week is Jake for resurrecting the 6v6 5 5 debate for the 10 million Let's time. Go. Why do people keep resurrecting this debate? Please. I don't Thank want to you, talk Admiral. about 6v6 Thank 5 5 at all. I don't want to talk bro. about this don't, topic anymore. Like, don't talk about it. It's too late. I got baited. I replied to well, people. Well, hold on, hold on. I, you can't be blaming me. <laughs> no, I actually blame Sumino. No, 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 no. I, no, 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 I don't Nobody blame. Nobody has to reply. I actually think it came from Sumino. Sumino brought it up, and then I oh, saw you bring deep. it up, and then everybody brought it up, and now it's a whole thing again. You only now bring it up if you're interested in talking again. about it. If you're not interested in talking about it, 
Fucking click off that shit, yo. It's just, it's all over my timeline. It makes I my can't brain rot, it. bro. It's no, Solomon, get it off timeline. the fucking screen. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Get it the fuck <laughs> off my screen right now. I don't give a shit. Every Jeez, month, every sake. month we have the same debate. I won't stand by while people slander the good name of 5v5, all right? It's fun. Fighting the, the good game fight. Is fucking I appreciate fun. you. I played for eight years, I guys. You. I'm enjoying it. I won't, no, I won't I, stand uh, too quietly. My, my actual, what is this? What is this? It's your stream. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, so Solomon, because Solomon came into my stream yesterday oh during God. during the thirty hours, I and he's like, not write that, bro. and he's like, "Are you gonna be on Plat Chat tomorrow?" I'm like, "How are you doubting me?" I was like, "Dude, I will never miss Plat Chat. My wife could be in labor, and I'd still abandon my child's birth to be on Plat Chat." That's what I said on. That's so I, base. Said on my stream thirty God hours damn. deep with no sleep. Holy that shit. is definitely that is not going to come back and haunt you, bro. Don't, don't, don't put that in the Tinder Do profile. Not put this on your dating profile. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think it's gonna do me any favors. <laughs> no, my um, actual, uh, my actual nomination is the entire country, of Japan. <laughs> I'm, country with it. I'm so with it. I'm so with it. The no, that is, oh, that that is based. Japan, bro. Yeah, their government. They they had a huge change of monetary policy. Seems like they're going under, undergoing some change. No, they're so. actually backing esports. Thing. I think they're gonna back esports. So that's hell yeah. based. They're gonna back esports. Yeah, they're gonna like actually fund it. Like, who who are they? Japan? Uh, no, the streets. The streets? The streets <laughs> are backing esports? No, I think Japan. Japan, I I don't know. I I could be talking shit, I mean, but I'm pretty sure. Like a nap, I heard, I, heard I think the Japanese government is going to... There <laughs> you go. go. This is country. so Brent's Bear of the Week. I, I can't is, wait to I like Brent. Brent. Yeah, I'm Brent's voting week. for Japan. What's Japan? Oh, my oh, God. 12v12, high key would be fun. <laughs> High key would be fun. Like, give me some true pubs. I don't know, like, imagine you could, like join and leave you know what i mean like like it's like it's oh, not TF2. even like sometimes it's 12 v 11 TF2. and shit you just fucking come you come in or whatever dude i don't know what's going on fuck it let's let's roll out on doofus bro let's see what yeah, happens actual tf2 moment five yeah. engineers making let's sentry bases sentry i can't i can't think Fort of thing that is less boring or more boring we didn't know this but then you make all the maps just x2 scale x2 scale <laughs> Or do, make them really dude, small. Like do you two realize forts. you'd have to be a fucking wartime two general 12 12. to make calls for those comps? Bro, it's just like oh, you can have a, it like battlefield. <laughs> you can have the command a battlefield. And you're like, I'm gonna okay, drop dropping the roadhog uh, ultimate package here, and then they have to go there and they get the roadhog ult, and then everybody can use it. No, 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 you have one Abrams, and they can drive the right You do it. No skill rating. No skill rating. Like full on, full on. Just you just click join, and it's like just you just join any server, and it's like halfway through the fucking game. Yeah, match go, Pelicans is gonna be so much fun. You, you, you turn your brain off, Johnny. You're thinking if you're making calls, you're thinking way too much, bro. People are playing music on the mic. That's the shit that's going on. Someone's got HLDJ pumping yes. the fucking Cardi B on the mic, dude. That's what's going on in the 12 vote. There's no comms. There's no comms. <laughs> All it is is a Vici on oh my bro. God. Classic EU TF2 experience. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh actually. god oh god all right brand spur of the week the country of japan <laughs> yep <laughs> i'd love Let's to see it go. dude i'm telling yeah. you i don't OWC know what the japanese japan. forums are it. but go 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 forward this information and uh we, we can't wait to support our fellow japanese kind of creators it's awesome that they're popping off so we're big okay. fans here at plat chat oh, all yeah. right this has been plat chat overwatch episode 219 jake arrow jaws it's been a pleasure um I'll, I'll i'll see you guys next week and uh, we'll chat about overwatch the game what's ahead and the developer update and everything that's in store take care everybody good bye good bye. night good night solomon can go to sleep <laughs>